Okay, that should work. I have no clue what was going on. So that was 20 minutes of me being totally silent. That sucks. I mean, and... I've never had to actively check that. It's just... There was some weird source that said it was just a bunch of random numbers, and that's what it said. Streamlabs was reading mic input from. And I literally have no idea why or what was going on. One of the most... It's nonsense. How many things do I have to check before... Dark Spirit Silver Chariot. That, 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 that's gotta be a JoJo reference, right? Wonder if they're gonna use a- wait! Oh! They dis- they DC and they rage quit. Yeah, how are you doing? It's good to- good to see you. How are you? But... I know I was talking about what I was trying to talk, but if the mic- the mic didn't work. I'm trying to ask you how you knew Maggie Mag- Maggie Mag slash- is it Maggie or Maggie? God knows. Slash Ko. Cause I met them on a game of- of all things Wind Trace a few years ago. And they don't even play Genshin anymore. But, yeah. I'm not even kidding. Very funny way to meet someone online. But, I know, I was trying to mention, and, and I thought you might just not want to answer, but I know I heard that you made your own art. Now I was looking into maybe getting art commissioned or model commissioned or something like that. And I know I saw the stuff you made, and it seemed really cool. So if you have any interest in taking comms, I would possibly be interested in availing myself of that option and possibility. Either way, it's nice to well, not face-to-face, -face, but voice-to-text for the first time. Okay, so, what just died? Was it a... Hmm. Something clearly just died. I guess the question is... Okay, and they haven't unlocked the illusory wall. So they've got to be somewhere down here. Okay, so they're over there. I guess the question is, could I find a way to team up on them with that deacon? And I think I could. The idea ideally would be to try to get at them from behind, but we'll see. Okay, so there you are. There you are. Sotar 47. Okay, so if you go over for that deacon, I can try to go for the combo. And that's about a third of your health down. Interesting. Aw. So you're getting your Karthus Flame Mark up now. Oh, fine. Can I lure you over to another Deacon? Oh, nice, nice. Okay, I... I'll make sure to do that. I didn't see that yet, but I'm... That's exciting. That's a very, very fun prospect. And you are... Come on. Uh, I know, I know that I'm literally an unwanted invader and literal scum, but... Ah. Come on. There's only so much assets to be used. I'm a total hypocrite. But thank you for answering. I will look into that. And of course you're hanging back. Of course you're hanging back. I guess the question is how much can I... Mmm, deep protection is... So, I guess they're doing kind of a faith build. When these fights or when these finding people for art... Because those are two very different things. I am very concerned in my ability to win this fight. Okay. And there you go. Let's hammer the... Ooh, ooh. One. I I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying. I got about halfway to the Covenant rack last time, and... Oh, you're kidding. Stupid. Okay. Dodge. Oh. Ooh, 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 ooh. I thought I got a dodge off, but I guess I probably went for... Uh, went for a backstab and got caught. I, oh, and it's lagging like nobody's business. I just... Do I go for a Tears or a Carthus Flame Mark or a... Guess the idea is... If I get some of the Deacons to engage, there's one back there right now and he... Uh, you gotta be kidding me. Okay. So how are you gonna... Hmm, and don't hit me. Don't hit me. Oh, but I... Hmm, dodge... It's just, Dark Souls 3 is the absolute worst Souls game to be running a leveling every stat equally build. Because in every other Souls game, every stat is somewhat useful, but Dark Souls 3's got luck. And unless you're running a build with basically one of two very specific weapons, you get nothing out of having any kind of luck. It is very, very silly, I will say. 
And I... Mm, how do I... Okay, well, if I... Ah, and of course you... Fast Estus was obnoxious and... What? What in the goddamn? What weapon was he... Oh, just... You don't get to act like you ate when you use Guts Greatsword. I'm sorry. Literal cheese weapon. You know, the only thing that can stagger anything in DS3. Because also DS3... Oh, Hajime Mashtenshi, I am... in pain. Because, you know, I was expecting more people to be active on a Sunday than a... than a... Wednesday or Thursday, but... I don't have any backup for these invasions at all. At all. But T-Blaze, the guy who just... Who's popping in right now. I was... I believe it's a guy. I was talking to him. He's a friend of a friend I know online. And also a streamer off and on who does art comms and model comms. So I was talking about the idea of maybe doing a comm or something. Possibly. It's an idea because, you know... I do think I've kind of plateaued in terms of where I can go just using free assets. So that's a fun prospect, you know. I'm kind of lazy. I don't like looking for things. So for something to relatively just kind of fall into my lap... Can't pretend to complain. So we are going to try another invasion and hope someone shows up. I think given that the invasions aren't as frequent as they were on Wednesday and... On Tuesday and Wednesday and also I'm just... Well, on Wednesday, I was only invading on Wednesday, 2021. So they start playing in 2021, or yeah. But this is basically kind of like a focus sash effect, like in Pokemon. Actually, maybe more like a 100% activation focus ban. But either way, the big thing is, as you may have noticed, it's saving me from one hit on death. But it's just <sighs> great swords hard counter me. It's not great. Let's do this thing. Alright. Time for a fair and honest duel, maybe. This guy, is that fair or is that wolf knight great sword? I'm not entirely sure. Dodge and uh roll catches. The hammers don't come out nearly as fast as I might like to. I honestly might be better off switching to cell swords or something for PvP. Especially since the poise damage of drain hammers honestly isn't enough to make the solar speed worth it in any way. Okay. And... Okay, we managed to get that off. That's nice. Oh, you. Absolute reprobate. I... Mmm. Got a bit of a trade, but I don't have nearly enough bullets to make a trade worth it in the slightest. So, t boys play Souls, or at least did. Katsu, have you played any Souls games? Because the Elden Ring DLC is coming out quite soon, and I am... A reasonable amount of excited. Oh, I... I didn't know it had that much tracking. I... Okay. I thought I would have been able to just sidestep that. Well, you know, you learn something new every day. Okay, and just spin it. Well, that's the end of that. Yeah, that... I've been trying to think about how I want to do my Elden Ring run when I get around to Elden Ring. And the big thing would be... I'm going to try to use weapon buffs as soon as possible. Because Dark Souls 3 arguably has the most inaccessible weapons buff. Yeah, I was thinking about it because it's on, it's on the greatsword that you can get from the... Not Fort Hate. Forget the name. The Castle... The Castle Morn. You can get it at Castle Morn on the greatsword there. But you could also get it, if I recall correctly, as an Ash of War from... The lion in one of the forts, I think it's Fort Gale in Kaled. And I was thinking about trying to ru rush that early, maybe, and use it on Margit. Because it would be a fun way to get a bunch of stance breaks and criticals off on him. But it's it would be a matter of either specking out to use that greatsword early on, or trying my luck in that lion guardian. And I think... Spec for the Great Sword would be fine, but oh, could not invade, fail the join session. Oh, so I guess that means that the door on the right is not actually accessible at all. This is all there is of Anne Orlando in Dark Souls 3. What's really funny is in the original Dark Souls 1, as you may know or may or may not remember, this 
was actually originally a... Some of this glass was broken. So even though the cathedral was a lot more decrepit, somehow that glass has been repaired. Very, very funny, Franklin. Okay, so in that case, I can just fight Aldrich then. So that would mean... Mm, everything's at 17 now, so that means no upgrading anything proper. Yeah, exactly. It's, you know... Gwendolyn might have gotten eaten, and everyone might be gone or dead or various states have demoralized, but god damn it, we can repair the window. Honestly, I feel like, in its own way, that's actually very, very realistic. It's very much a kind of rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic kind of thing. The sense of, you know, we may not be able to prolong the Age of Fire forever, but we, we can at least make sure that the Anne Orlando windows in the cathedral are somewhat pretty. Most poetical aspect of Dark Souls. I guess the question is... I think I'm definitely going to want to go full pyro for this. The question is... I don't remember is... Okay, Great Chaos Fire Orb is two slots in this game, so that means no tears. No crying. And I can't use Chaos Bent Vestiges yet. I think I might be able to use it on Dragon Slayer Armor. You can't do that on him. I think Flash Sweat might be okay, in the specific sense of... He does get fire in Phase 2. But maybe actually, maybe I'll just go for Replenishment or something. I could see that being somewhat useful. But Aldrich is specifically weakest to fire damage. So I think I'll just totally not use the Drain Hammers at all for this fight. He's decently weak to Slash, so I could try using Cell Sword. But most of all, I think... If I stay away, keep a... Well, that's right, I actually can't use... I can't use Shield of Want yet. Wait, did I... Oh, I'm incredibly stupid. I literally forgot to use... I literally forgot to actually level up. I went back to Fire Emblem just to level up. If I, if I just wanted to attune spells, I could have done it here in Anorlando. But I went back to try to level up. I don't have the hard souls I might like in order to... Level my... Let's see... Level power, because the thing about it is that I can't actually use the shield. I have it equipped for additional soul gain, but I can't actually equip it unless I'm two-handing it. Which is... wait, actually, is... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Since I'm two-handing right now, that makes it appear, but if I... I can do this! Incredibly silly, but I can do that. So actually, we'll take out the Drang Hammers, put on Priest Chime, and... This should be everything we need for the fight, which means I can equip something in the way of actual armor, which is more than a little refreshing, I'll say. What can I get which would put me right under 50% weight limit? This is... What do we got for min maxes? I can try looking at specific resistances. This... this is good enough. I don't mind enough. So, replenishment and great chaos fire orbs, because... Aldrich doesn't move all that fast from the little I've seen in the fight. So I don't imagine that he'll move out move out of the way quickly enough to make the Chaos Lava Pool too hard to deal with. We'll see. Hmm. I'm just a little disappointed, because I got 17 human dregs in total last time. That said, I can still turn in 10, and that would mean... Dodge, okay. We're just gonna do... A real boss run. A real legitimate boss run. We do have a bit more... We got summon again. So how many summons do you think I'll get before I actually reach the boss fog? That's the real question. And okay, so that would mean... Taking off a good deal on this. Oh, this guy again. I I've seen this guy. Welcome back, I guess. So that means putting our... Oh, but we don't have our fire arc up, so that means... I guess I could try using replenishment instead of tears, but this is still... Silly. Since we're not really kitted out, I'll just... Pop the buff and see if I can do this just with the hammers. I'm not expecting much. And that said, I, this does mean having a bit more FP to spare for the sake of using... A spin attack. So we'll see... Where is that guy? All the way over there. Oh, wow. So we'll just throw at him, like, 
throw ourselves at him like, I don't know, human wave tactics, I guess. If he kills us, that just means we can actually fight Aldrich. So where is... Oh, another Aldrich Faithful got some. And this might be good for me. It's definitely good for me. Faithful Caleb. Aldrich Faithful Caleb. So is that... How did he get it to all be one word for Faithful Caleb? It's interesting. Had to be some kind of ex exploit, I imagine, but what? Huh? Okay. Interesting. Got a bit of replenishment going on, but I... Ooh, ooh, I... Okay. Okay, I... Alright, I... Oh, please, I... Let's just wait till Caleb gets over here. Try to go for a two-on-one, because I am not interested in fighting fair. Oh, please, I... Where is he? Where is Caleb? And just... Well, I... Uh, oh, over there, I... Alright. Can you get down here, or...? The annoying thing is... Uh, that running spin attack is faster than I would have liked, and faster than I would have expected. Okay. So I don't imagine that, that this guy is going to try to bow out or anything. See if we can engage him, and the Drag Knights aren't there, but the Giants should be waking up. There we go, that'll be fun. Hello there. So I think we can get at least a kill. Hi, hello, and... Mmm, I... Ooh, okay. Mm. But keep you busy and make sure... Oh, the Giants can... Wait, what? Well, that was... interesting. I didn't think that could happen. Okay. This is... Oh, he was the seed of a giant tree. Oh, that's fun. Well, whatever. Let's let this guy kill us. And... I... Ah, this is not fast enough we need. We're taking cell swords back. Okay. Hi there, hello. Dodge it. Mmm, even with that, it... Okay. Dodge it. Ooh, ooh. Mm -hmm. Decent-ish damage, but... And you were still able to run out of the way of that, but I... Ah, uh, you took some damage, but... Not two, three, four... I can still only get two hits off. That's annoying. Could try going for a drop attack or something, but... Fun flame mark. So the question is, could I true combo into a... One, two, and... What? I... Okay. So, can you true combo that like you can with drain hammers, or... One... Thank you, lag. Incredible. I just... Hmm. I mean, this is... This was... I was intending to fight the boss, not this guy. He's gonna kill me. I don't have any way to really deal with him. One, two, and... One, and... Ah. We sweet... Come on, you... I should have gone for heavy armor. Or, frankly, if I wanted to do this legit... What I would have done was go for heavy armor, but the, really, the recovery time on that is surprisingly good. I, whatever, I guess. Given how slow Stance is, I would have expected a much, much slower recovery. Uh. Well, I can't. I'm not surprised that. Great sword was as busted as it turned out being, but can't ima I cannot pretend to be happy about it. So, hello there. Dodge. Mm, dodge. Okay. Oh, all right. Let's see who else is. Oh, but where am I gonna spawn back in if I? Mm -hmm. All right. All right then. Epic Deacon's moment. I guess I could try taking off that covenant item. I really don't feel like it. Mm. Mm. Nora! I know some Noras. Okay, but who who just died? Somehow I don't imagine that was a particularly good outcome for me. Okay, but what if I... Oh, okay, cool, fun. 
Man Titty McGee. Spin and stuff. Oh, but I. Alright. Thanks. Fun. That's the end of that. You know, I should have expected them to team up on me, and that's literally what they're supposed to do, but. It's fun getting that slam attack up, at least. It is what it is. No, because I have to have two out of my three slots occupied in order to take Great Cast Fireball for the for the Aldrich fight. So I just don't have that right now. We are trying our best. Okay. Well, if we go through the... One, two... And Traverse the Fog, Invasion gets cancelled. Wait, did we... Oh, we got teleported mid fog wall. Wow. For a second, I thought the cutscene was loading in in some weird way. Well, Caleb's here. Good to see you. Let's just try this out again. Lord have mercy on my soul. Oh, well. Okay, I didn't die, but that was silly. So, Caleb is getting his butt kicked, so. No, absolutely no mercy. That's what I get for having the item equipped, I guess, but... I don't know where he is. I... Oh, okay, well, alright. Hello there, hi, and... Can we... Slam, slam! There we... There we go. Oh, there we... Oh, I, No, don't heal. Don't... Don't let this guy heal. If only out of decent range drops right now. There we go! That was nice. Anytime I get that plunge off. Anytime I get that plunge off. First actual successful PvP of the session. I feel good. So maybe, maybe this is, this is a sign that will kill Aldrich first try. Maybe this is a sign that will kill Aldrich first try. We'll see. So we're here in this part of the cathedral. Let's take this off and put on. Yeah, yeah, I'm a, I feel good. I'm happy about that. Sometimes, sometimes, but we can actually go through now, which is good. Hello. Aldrich, Devourer of Gods. Wait, is... Wait! Oh! The boss fight doesn't cancel the invasion. So I need to actually unequip the item. Alright. <laughs> okay. That was anticlimactic in a certain kind of way. Dirk Diggler. Not sure I like that name. So where is this individual? Yeah, but Katsu. T-Blaze and I... I've been spitballing with various people about the idea of using a co-op mod for Elden Ring in order to do a six-person playthrough of the game. Just a six-person adventuring party. If the scheduling could work out, which I guess it was limited to specific weekends... Just time quit on weekends. It could be decent to schedule, actually. But it's something I've tried talking about with various people. So if you have any interest, because I know you do stream off and on. I don't know. It's just... Have it, the more people I've interested, the more people I could draw from if and when I actually end up doing the darn thing. Okay, so they've interacted with McDonald, I think. But Oh, and you were hiding behind there. That is... That's fun. Hi, friend. Let's do the storm thing. Get over here. So this guy's got a funny katana. Funny katana. Okay. Let's see if Aldrich faithful. Whether we get any friends to help us invade or something. Mm, I don't think I can poise through that. Well, it... The thing about it is... Elden Ring is probably, I would say... The easiest Souls game to start with. I'm not even kidding. It's definitely the most accessible, and a lot of that is actually because it's an open world. Which makes a lot of... Because with Souls games... A lot of the time, difficulty is based on build in a certain kind of way. In the sense of... Your build can be compatible or incompatible with certain enemies. So whether a fight's hard or easy can be based off of... You know, your build. Not just pure player skill. Because it is an RPG, and well, that's the end of that. Time to fight Aldrich. But... The idea and the conceit would be... 
basically playing Elden Ring is a... Honestly, I feel like Final Fantasy XIV would be the best comparison, because... The original reason I originally set 6, other than, that, than it being a pretty decent big-ish number, is that the Seamless Co-op mod I was looking into originally had a player limit of 6. It doesn't anymore, but it originally did. And so I was trying to think of 6 meaningfully distinct builds, and the idea was essentially sort of 6 builds that... Pres well, the funny thing about it is that I think I would have Friendly Fire turned on, which is an option, in the interest of things not getting too cheesy. Oh, but right, right, okay, I gotta avoid that. Oh, and you can break those walls, I mean columns, I was not expecting that. Okay, just, I like, I like how he uses a lot of Gwendolyn's attacks. I actually didn't even really notice that. I saw some video of the Aldrich fight many, many years ago, but I- oh, wrong thing, wrong thing. Great Chaos Fireball, Great Chaos. And can we- and- oh, well- oh, okay. Huh. 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 Okay. So Chaos Fire Orb, he actually moves around a lot faster than I expected. So what I think that means is no need for Grand Chaos Fire Orb. We, among other things, what I should do is a lot more Ashen Estes if I do want to be spamming Pyros on him. Because he is quite weak. Quite weak to fire. He has about negative 20 fire resistance. He's got positive everything else, but he is specifically weak to fire. Not just less resistant, but weak to fire. But Aldrich, as the name might suggest, and I think T-Blaze knows, but his whole deal is that he's basically an evil priest that turned into literal slime by becoming a cannibal. And his evil basically sw swelled out of his body. Which is pretty metal, actually. For lack of a better term. But, and we don't have... Oh, we had an... Right, we had an SS class to use. So, thank you. Actually, kind of forgot about that, but we got one. He's a cool guy. It's interesting because if you play DS1, which I'd say Dark Souls 1 is probably the second best Dark Souls game to start with, he is the blacks he's the main blacksmith there. Or at least someone who looks identical to him. Another Andre. Andre of Astora. But it's... It's suggested that he's the same Andre. But... There's some vagueness. Especially considering he would have had to live for literal centuries it's there's a lot of continuity but there's a lot of vagueness in that continuity too which is i actually quite like that because the game delivers a lot of information or through item descriptions and a lot of things it does playing around with that is playing around with the loss of historical knowledge with the passing of time in particular in dark souls 2 a lot of the items that come back from dark souls 1 get a lot of the details about Dark Souls 1 wrong. What comes to mind for me, for example, is the very first boss of Dark Souls 1, you're not supposed to beat the first time you encounter it. You're supposed to run away from it because you actually don't have any- Oh my- Okay. I was not expecting that. I timed that too late. You're supposed to run away, pick up items, because the first time you find it in the starting area, you literally don't have anything in the way of weapons other than a broken sword. You're supposed to do that and then come back and kill it relatively easily. And then, if you beat it on the first time, either by taking basically grenades as your starting gift, or by just being really cracked, or the real easy way is just doing a New Game Plus playthrough and starting off with a bunch of weapons. But either way, if you beat, if you beat it first try, you get Oh, he can strength these relatively easily, and... Oh, my goodness. I can't get in on this guy. That is certainly something. I... Alright. So, how are we gonna... Okay, what are you gonna do? What is... Oh, okay. So, we can use that for cover, which is nice. Come on. I... Okay, okay, okay. No, I didn't have to. I didn't have to. I sat behind the column, and it worked just fine. Dodge, and... But... Essentially, oh my goodness, wow. So actually, 
Pure Pyro is not going to work. It's too slow. And he actually... He's actually a bit more threatening at range, frankly. But... I think Karth of Mark is probably my best option here. So, if I recall, he's... Relatively... He's less resistant against slash damage, which makes sense because he's literally slime. Yeah. Depression, you're not good enough. Anxiety, nobody likes you. Slime themed hollow notes. You're out of sludge. I'm out of slime. So I guess we're gonna end up fighting him the same way that I fought Solovan, which is gonna be Karthus Waymark and Tears of Denial, which I feel like I should grind out a few more Concords. Proofs of Concord, just for the sake of Getting Dark Moon Ring, because that would give me one more attunement slot, because I've got Saints Ring on, and I guess I could try putting another attunement ring on, but there aren't really any spells that I'd want to use other than Tears and Carthus Flame Monk right now. So this is what we'll use, and I need to put on a helmet. Okay, this one is frankly incredibly undrip, but if it keeps us from dying, I can't complain too much. But if you could get a somewhat decent look at Aldrich, you would see that the top part of his body above the slime was this, for lack of a better term, this femboy twink, who was originally an optional boss in one of the gods of the setting in Dark Souls 1, Dark Moon Gwendolyn, and as a result, a lot of the attacks that Aldrich uses are inspired by or outright taken from the attacks used by Gwendolyn. In particular, what I actually liked seeing was <clears throat> when he did his big soul spear attack and his big sort of magic shrapnel attack, it had more of a purple color than it did in Dark Souls 1 where it was just blue like other sorceries. And I think the reason it wasn't... Oh, I didn't die from that. Well, alright. Oh, but I should really put it up. You said it, not me. You said it, not me. But, no, Gwendolyn's character is literally being raised as a woman. Because you had magic affinity with the moon. So, I... Okay, let's just see how well we can... Oh, dark attack. I did not know you could do that. But... His spear is actually less of a spear and more of a magic staff that he conjured... A magic greatsword on the end of... Because the attack over there is actually the attack of another boss in Dark Souls 1, the God of the Dead, Gravelord Nido, which... Oh, interesting. That was kind of tough to dodge. Okay, well, whatever. I, let's get out of the way of that, and... Can we hit the slime? Oh, we can't hit the slime. That's a shame. I feel like I could try putting tears back on. I should. I should. So what are you doing? And it went right through the wall. Classic. What's also interesting is that, Katsu, you may or may not be familiar with the Ornstein and Smo boss battle from Dark Souls 1, the fight against the small knight and the big knight, but this is actually that exact same room, albeit in ruins, which is pretty cool. But what's interesting is that in that fight, the pillars can also break, but the difference between this knight and that fight is that, generally speaking, even when the pillars are broken, they still work to prevent enemies from getting all that annoying. So I... Oh, but we need to put... We need to put Flame Mark back on. So this should be about... I think he should... Yeah, he's embered up. Phase 2 transition. This shouldn't be crazy, crazy. We'll see. Oh, but now he has... Now he's got his fire trail. So fun, so fun. Okay. Well, let's just dodge out of the way that... Oh, okay. I... What? What? Oh! Okay, I... I figured the tracking worked in a... Moves forward away from him and slightly homes in on you way, not in a literally follows your exact position kind of way. That... You know, we learned something. Dark Souls is about trial and error. Learning from failure. That's what I'm gonna say instead of... Instead of just... It's not cope. It's not cope. I promise it's not just cope. Okay. So, try this again. Hopefully, killing him should give us enough souls to get our strength to 18, which, among other things, would 
Let us use Drang Hammers and Shield of One in one hand. And therefore actually use Shield of One as a shield. Because I haven't really been using shields much this run. Because as you might be able to tell, I've been using these paired weapons, which are... Dark Souls 2 had a mechanic where you could actually dual wield different weapons. Dark Souls 3 doesn't have that specifically, but it has a few weapons that, if you try to two-hand them as in wield the one weapon in two hands, you instead dual wield, which is a very cool mechanic. Oh, and... alright. So sometimes he goes for two. Let's just see if we can... oh my goodness. What if I... okay, so yep. So in phase two, that's when they change. Alright, so dodge. And can we get a little bit of... little... oh, we still can't hit the slime. Sad. Okay, so what are you gonna do next? What are you gonna do next? Frankly, the game audio seems a bit loud, and okay. That was interestingly delayed. Okay, so... Kid named, time to recast Tears of Denial. But this... Tears is the only reason I can not just completely fail. So, let's... Got that back on, and... Okay, cool. All we have to do is get behind you. Just get behind you and spin and dodge. Thank you, thank you. And so, still can't hit. Still can't hit you. So now you're back over here. What are you going to do? Dodge. Oh, but that's not the big. Dodge. Okay. That was an interesting attack. To okay, all right. Okay. He's not expecting you to follow up. Come on, come on. And... Okay, interesting. But we could actually kind of tank that. Big thing is, I know how to deal with the arrow Wayne right now, which is to keep on running like an absolute coward. And okay, so that worked. That worked. Okay, dodge it. Oh, alright. Okay. So the arrow ring kept going a lot more than I expected. But we actually didn't lose our tears, which is surprising in a good way. So what a good... Okay. Thank you. And we're slowly taking damage, but you still got a lot of fire weakness. This should be still quite doable, depending on... Oh, and there you are. There you are. So what are you going to do now? Uh, okay. Oh, and now he's using life on side. Okay. That wasn't bad to dodge, but we'll just do it. So dodge. Thank you. Where are you next? Where are you now? I... There you are, opposite side of the arena. Fun. Oh, but it seems like you dodge it. Oh, okay, interesting. Thanks. So just one, two, three, and... Mm, we're out of Estus, though. Oh, that is probably not a very good thing. Okay. Let's actually put our... That back on. The big thing is that I actually need... Oh, but I'm... Mm, this could be quite bad. This could be very, very bad. And I dodge... Dodge, dodge, and... Ah, uh, ah, uh, okay. Big thing is... I still had a lot more Ashen Flask allocated as a result of... <sighs> the most annoying thing about Dark Souls 3, honestly... It isn't the lack of poise that's up there. It isn't the fact that they added a useless lock stat largely as a joke. But it's the fact that you can't... Reallocate your Estus Flask at a bonfire. Because in Elden Ring, you can allocate, reallocate your flask very, very freely at any side of grace. But given that a lot of switching between builds, or at least between a melee build and a magic build, is having your Estus suit it one way or the other, you have a bit less ability to switch between builds than I might prefer. But... Now that we have more Estus, the reason we died that time is because I ran out of Estus. He would have... I would have beaten him if, I, if I'd had these three more healing flasks, so I'm just going to... Try this all over again. Alright. Alright. So the big thing is, and I was showing this off last time, but... The buff effect actually shows up... Stays up even after you rested a bonfire. So if you're smart, you cast it at a bonfire, rest at the bonfire again, get your mana back, and then just go in with a buff up and full mana. It may be a little cheesy, but this may surprise you, but I'm not exactly interested in playing a 
playing fair when my opponent is Dark Souls 3, or maybe more specifically Aldrich. So, let's do this thing. Okay. What I do find interesting is, it's stated that the deacons are both clerics and sorcerers, but they use pyromancies more than anything else. I do find it interesting that throughout Souls games, they keep repeating the idea of flame sorcery, but it's never anything we can use ourselves in any meaningful way. Okay, so as long as I'm behind him, that's not a problem. Okay, cool. There we go, that's actually quite good. One, two, three, and we took that damage. I don't care. We're taking through that- Oh, I actually- I didn't notice that the entire floor of the cathedral was slime. That is... Pretty nasty. Oh, but I- Okay! I- Never mind, then. I thought he was... So it seems that the way they travel is actually determined... He can change the direction of firing up until the attack actually is done charging. Okay, thank you, thank you. That's that's a very, very useful tip. I'll try that out. Yeah. So hopefully that might make the difference. Because, you know, like a lot of things in Souls, it's ultimately kind of a battle of attrition. If I can take him down. You know, it's sort of, if it takes a certain amount of assets to get a certain amount of health down, it's kind of a numbers game in terms of do I have enough assets to do this fight. But, you know, getting more regular assets helped, and hopefully if I can extend my window to damage him, that should also be very, very useful. Like I said, every now and they talk about flame sorcery, basically. You know, sorcerous magic that uses fire, but it's never anything that the actual player has access to outside of Demon Souls, actually. So where was my... Oh, it was over there. Okay, right. And I... Interesting. Let's just go over and roll. Oh, but I'm... Interesting. And that's gone now, so... Let's tears back up. Then use this. And what is he... Okay. Another one, another one. At least the tracking on that isn't crazy crazy. Okay, so how do we want to do this? Mm-hmm. Just don't let me... Dodge! And that was pretty good. And I... What? Okay, I keep forgetting that he can do that. Well, whatever. Let's get that back before he does. More stuff. And dodge. Thank you. Oh, but... Oh, that's a lingering. That's surprising. It didn't work at that time. We'll see. And guess who needs to use tears again? Me. Okay. Alright. Dodge it. Okay. Actually, we can just run through that. I... I'm not sure you could just run out of the way of that in Dark Souls 1, but I think it was probably a question of build there. Okay, so I dodge, and then to dodge, thank you. So there we do, there we go. This is good, and we should be able to get a little bit off. Oh, oh, far away from, just barely. Okay, interesting. So how is, okay, if we get that, can we, mm, and I, Keep on running, keep on running until... Oh, baby, I... Oh, uh, oh, uh, I... Hmm... Luckily, it's still just shrapnel, but I... Dodge and... Okay, luckily, we got staggered, we got knocked down, which is... The only way you can... Best way to dodge that, frankly. Okay, and I... Okay, and I... Are you gonna... You are not going for another attack right now, are you? Well, whatever. But... We should reapply Karthus. Okay, and that got that off. He couldn't poise lock us out of that. So we run away again. Run away again like intelligent cowards. Wait for that to finish and hope that he... Oh, goodness. Am I not... I think I'm just not fast enough for this fight. It's kind of crazy, actually. Dodge and... Wow. Okay, so I was close and... Really? Okay. It does make sense because its travel time is a bit on the slower side. But... The closer I am, the sooner I need to dodge when he uses that. Frankly, I guess as soon as it starts sort of moving for the lineup for the actual release, that's when I should dodge. As it doesn't have good... It, it doesn't have very good tracking. It comes out fast, but it's got no homing whatsoever. That's how I need to do it. It... 
He's harder than I expected. To be fair, I'm definitely more than a little underleveled because I... I did a side quest in a weird kind of way. One of the secret or true endings of the game relates to basically becoming the Lord of the Undead specifically. Not the Lord of the Dark, but the Lord of the Undead. And to do that, you have to interact with this one NPC. But if you piss her off by punching her, she will have another NPC come and invade you, and you can get some items by killing that NPC when it invades you. Not actually sure if, it, if the NPC named Wandor Pale Shade is actually a man or a woman, but either way, they invade you in a few inconvenient locations, and they... Okay, and I think I can get my tears back up. I... And... This is... It's getting painful. This is getting painful. Okay. So it's... Oh, wow. Okay. So I didn't really see what he was doing, because the... Alright. Hmm. Let's run out of the way, and... So what would the best way to... Uh, strafe around me? Dodge it. Oh, okay, thank you. Got out of the way of that, and then one, two, three, and... Okay! That didn't proc. So, what if I... Oh, and that's... Okay, the lingering hitbox on that is... Evil. Okay, but the big thing is it's actually a lot like Elven Beast, is that since he reliably... teleports to the exact other side of the arena, you can... Alright, alright. So let's take that. You can predict where he'll pop up and use that to... make the fight a bit more predictable. So dodge... Dodge, okay. And you can't go for a third. No, you can go for a third, wow. Okay, all right. So now we have to run, now we have to run. So the big thing is if I just run in a straight direction, that should make it hard as possible for it to get me. Oh, but eventually it veers off course, so that's good. And I, nice, okay. And will you, interesting, that wasn't quite it. Heal, and... And, of course, you're doing that now. I... Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right, and I... What?! Oh, we got stuck on that tiny piece of rubble? That is the silliest thing. Okay. So, the big thing is... I have to be really, really aggressive in phase two. There isn't... A pyro that's fast enough to actually reliably engage him from range. I was actually visiting a friend yesterday, and he said very specifically that going from using a magic build, melee build Aldridge is easy, magic build Aldridge is crazy, crazy hard. Because he does have a lot of magic and lightning resist. The friendsome visitor. Bro visited his friend, literally. But I. And I was sort of always really weak to pyros, so I'll just use pyros. And that's when I kind of figure out what I tried to do today for the very first attempt at the fight, because I didn't know just how fast he was. Man is literally made of slime. He should not be that fast. Okay. I'm just gonna go over here and... Dodge! Dodge! Oh, I was not fast enough. Dodge! And Okay, cool. And what? How many can you chain in a row? That's ridiculous. I didn't know you could go for four. I swear, I swear. I swear he's trying to get harder. He's getting harder now that I've learned his fight somewhat. And I... Dodge. Thank you. And... Okay. That makes sense. And... Okay. But still, it's just crazy, crazy. Two, three, and dodge. Thank you. Let's take this. Okay, and then... Actually, actually, you didn't go on the opposite side that time. That Okay. One, two, and three, and... Okay, cool. That is actually a very, very good opening. So, thank you, and... What if I... Mm, not quite working. So the big thing is actually, if I just run over when he disappears, I can kind of get the jump on him, which would be nice. And did I... No, I've still got my buff up, which is good. Okay, so we run over. 
to show up here. Oh, but if I... Oh, wait, okay. Thanks. So the big thing is, if I manage to... Maybe try to... Okay. Thanks, thanks. Thanks, just go ahead and do that. And... Oh, oh but... Wow, that, that's a lot more damage than I expected from that. Okay. Big thing is, if I... Dodge. Dodge. And... Okay, not another, that's good. If I'm close, he won't do Dark Moon, which is... Means that if I... If I stay in the middle of the arena, that'll put me in position to... Get rid of him. Well, to attack him more or less as soon as he shows up. Once he shows up again. Okay, and then we'll... Dodge. Okay, I... Okay. Really? Okay. No, okay. But that was different. It wasn't the same two-hit attack twice in a row, it's just... Sometimes he'll do a third fall up, and sometimes he'll do a fourth fall up after even that. Which is crazy. Dodge, thank you. Okay. But he... Okay. So I really can't be... Oh my goodness. And of course you're countering my tears of all things. You're r ridiculous enough. See? See? Four. Four in a row. And what? Five? Five? I say the limit's four. And then he says, no, the limit's five. Okay, okay. If Aldrich is watching my stream, he could at least follow. Okay. But I... Uh-huh. And I... Come on, come on. I just... Okay. Come on, just... Really, 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 really... Okay. Just take that up and... Just don't... And of course you're going for the arrow as soon as I'm ready to move on. I hate you so much. I hate you so much. Okay. Whatever. I... Really? Really? Okay. Well, the big thing is that I literally cannot afford to try using... I can't try using rolls on the arrow attack. It's too fast. Maybe I could be really silly and try going for under 25% load. Because that would probably actually let me outrun the arrow attack. You know, that's exactly right. If bows were any good in this game, bows would be the obvious option. But that resonates with me as someone who literally did get going yet, in part because I wanted to fight the Thunder Manifestation better in Abyss. Katsu, Katsu. T-Boy's used to play Genshin, he doesn't anymore. I told him about the new Abyss coming next patch, but I don't think that'll get him back in, which frankly, good for him, he's finally free. But, yeah exactly, literally, Aldrich is weak to fire. If Yoimiya was in Dark Souls 3, you would literally just use Yoimiya against Aldrich. It's crazy. Okay, so if he runs straight in, you can check out any time you like, but you can never leave. Okay. Oh, but now he's doing that, so... Oh, okay, so we're behind, which means... That will completely stay out of the way of me, so that means... Pretty decently... Decent face transition, I guess, but oh wow, he moved a surprising distance away in a dodge, thanks. So that's not bad a dodge, now that I know where he's actually going. Okay, so just get out of the way, thank you. And where are you going next? Okay, you're going over there, okay, cool. If we can keep up the pressure, as long as we can keep up pressure, this boss isn't bad, but... Forget what I said, forget what I said. Fair. The thing about Wuwa is, and a lot of it is streamer concerns, but it's also just, and this, this, I'm going to sound really schizo, but I promise I'm cooking. The thing about Wuwa for me is that, and a lot of it is just, whenever I think about new games, I have to think, would my small but dedicated audience be interested in seeing them? But, the thing about Wuwa is, and there's nothing there's nothing wrong with wanting an audience that includes straight guys. A category that partially includes me. Or even having a game that does exclusively target straight guys. It's just, it's not the type of game I usually like to play, and it's not the type of game I think my audience would particularly want to watch. And the thing about Wuwa is that as cool as it looks, there was one thing that I saw and was sort of immediately thinking, okay, this game is definitely only targeting a 
almost entirely targeting a straight male audience with basically no thought of other audiences. And that's that, and this is gonna sound crazy. It's gonna sound crazy. It's got male characters with guns. Because Asian, Asian goshes oftentimes are just kind of, they assume pretty offensively that, you know, all the male characters are to appeal to female players, all the female characters are to appeal to male players, and all of our female players are going to think guns are icky and scary. So we're not going to give a single gun to a single male character. It's bad business. It's not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence at all that Genshin has four characters with firearms. Well, it's got three right now, soon to be, soon to be four, soon to be four. And every single one of those is or will be a female character. And it, I mean, it's definitely schizo sounding, but it, I think a lot of it is also just, I think it ignores, and it's interesting seeing a lot of largely male, presumably straight Genshin players heavily just glaze Capitano. Not because they think he's hot or anything, but just because they think he's really, really cool. You know, they get really into power scaling, which, you know, it's your thing. And die, die. Wait, we... We killed Aldrich. We also died. So, did we get any souls? Did we get any souls from that? No life with... That's, that's, a win's a win! A win's a win! Oh, and we got our ember back after dying! That's insane. Okay, the big thing is, I saw the soul count tick up, because I think they do delay death if you're in the midst of letting a boss die, just so you don't lose the souls. But I have, I have a ring of sacrifice. This will ensure that I don't lose those souls, but... Okay, the big thing is we can check out our key items. We've got Aldrich's Cinders of a Lord, and left by God Devourer Aldrich. The Lords will not return to their thrones themselves, let them return as Cinders. Aldrich became a Lord by devouring men, but was disillusioned with his throne, and so took to devouring gods instead. As one does, I guess. I hope they were tasty, at least. So, if we're gonna go back, I may as well... I've got Tears on, I've got Ring of Sacrifice on... I am not losing those souls, and I'm not losing that bloodstain. But that was a total adrenaline junkie moment. As just sort of, this is either going to be the closest victory of all time, or the closest defeat of all time. And I'm glad that it was a close victory instead of a close defeat. But I guess the big thing is, is if you do end up, and that would be a lot of fun, that would be cool, you know. You know, they say don't do business with friends, but, you know, I like breaking rules. But as I was saying, if I did get a con from you, I feel like we would have to do a stream or two together every now and then. But there we go. We, we got those souls. We got those souls. So let's light this Aldrich bonfire before anything else happens. Take this ring off, put on Pontiff Eye, and... Pontiff Eye. Hmm. Boost attacks. And we're gonna go back to Firelink. Should be two or three level ups, and either way, that should make a lot of things better. Okay. The big question is, will I get to... Will I get to 20 intelligence in time for the Dancer fight? The Dancer's an infamously hard... Wise, 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 but... I guess the big thing is... Will you be less busy in the summer? And that's the question. Welcome, um, Heart's Desire, let's level up real quick, and thank you. Because when you followed, I, you know, I followed back and checked things out, and it seemed like you had been relatively busy lately. So I wouldn't want to put pressure on you and force you to overextend yourself if you had job stuff or anything else getting in the way. But here we go, finally 18 strength, which means finally one-handed ring hammer. And actually being able to use Shield of One. One, Flames, Flames got thee. So that means, I guess, I don't remember. Oh, I don't think I had. The thing with Shield of One is that it gives you 20 more souls on kill, on enemy kill. But I don't remember. I don't think I had it equipped when I managed to kill Aldrich. Because it's hard to remember to switch it back and forth, especially since switching to the shield actually makes you go from dual wielding to single wielding. 
But it is what it is. I don't need to be that overpowered. Either way, we can actually use this shield as a shield. Oh, for that... That is, without a doubt, almost certainly a good thing. I am... I cannot deny that I am personally extremely online. Okay, so I think we, we could return Aldrich's cinders, but we can also check out the soul. Oh, that is dark. Ruminated on the fading of the fire, it inspired visions of a coming age of the deep sea. He knew the path would be arduous, but he had no fear. He would devour the gods himself. Nice. So what that means to me is... Oh, also, Katsu. There is a fan cord, which is really more of a schedule cord, so... If you're interested in... Seeing the rest of my Dark Souls journey... Maybe other things, because like I said, Elden Ring DLC is coming out on... June 20th, so I'm trying to get through the main soul scenes before that happens. St. Aldrich of the Deep. Not much of a saint. We got all these candles and... Let's put a cinders away. That is... Looks like a skull. It's a big ol' skull. And that's interesting, because I guess that might provide some insight into his original human form before he started going slime mode. So if we go over here, these... Yeah, they all look different. These are just helmets. So what will Hawkwood say now that we've actually managed to kill Aldrich? Is he even still here? I think he might have left. It does seem like it. Let me just check. Because I know Hawkwood departs eventually and challenges you. Hawkwood DS3. When... Curse Wanted, Great Wood. Oh, the shield for Andre to pass on. So actually left as soon as we beat Abyss Watchers. We just didn't really check. And then he'll request a duel. So we've also got another quest line to do relating to Cirrus of the Sunless Realms, who's this Dark Moon gal in, a very, in another part. But I think we may as well put Aldrich Faithful back on. I don't hate those invasions. And okay, 13 more victories, and that's the end of all that, so... Right, well, Matt is good. If we talk, he'll give us shield of the smith weapons, simple reinforcements, straight forward. Tynets, do the smithing, only friends, hurrah! Okay, so we actually haven't talked to him already. Another matter, special kind of coal, usual gems, all I had. He's quite thin skinned. By the by, S's shards. Oh, so it's just all this dog we didn't see originally. Either of them. Apply for focus, stay with you, treat him well. Protection, eventually break, repair, powder, build and break, back into shape. Two ways to smith, simple, infusion, property, five, five tutorial dialogues, okay. Oh, but he just, wait, so did we just not, were we too mean to Hawkwood or something? Or do we have to reload him after fixing that up? Okay, well, whatever, it is what it is. But, Sirius needs help at the Pit of Hollows, which I don't believe is over. Her summon sign is supposed to be outside the arena, which means I think I'd have to take the long way around and over. Well, whatever. Okay. So, yep, Hodrick is not here. We need to go up top. You know, in the part that isn't down in the pitfall. So, the closest way would be Quiff up. No, Undead... What the, no, it, it's Dilapidated Bridge. Dilapidated Bridge is going to be our fastest way to get top of the arena, then we'll get summoned. Okay. But, the question is... I think Aldrich might be the last boss who's really, really weak to fire. Maybe. Oh, there, there is... Dragon Slayer armor, that's right, but that, that by that time I should be able to use a better fireball. Is it 18 intelligence, which I could take. I just gotta make sure, I don't have to do it in any order as long as I make sure that I never have a stat two or more higher than another. But I... Yeah, that's good. That's good. And that's what I usually want. So we'll use our, use our usual setup and then go over, but oh, that's right, we are gonna get summoned. And it's not like it'll really matter. Okay. Oh, well, we're already invading another world. All the way to the place, but this is the setup we usually like having, so that's not bad. Okay. 
So we'll see how many invasions we end up doing in the meantime, but I think we might get the cutscene that allows us to pursue the Undead Lord ending soon. Oh, hello there. Hi. Smirking Jethro. Oh, you're interesting. I. Okay, alright. You are not giving me any quarter, which is smart. I commend that. Okay, but he is getting shot at, which means the covering fire should hopefully help us a little. He has to go this way. So if we... He might just die here. I wouldn't hate that. Okay. So in that case, let's put this shield back on. I'm not sure if it affects invasion stuff, but just in case it does. Hmm. He's already far gone. Ha. Huh. How do I want to deal with this guy? Oh, there, hello. So you've got a slow weapon, but it's slow enough that I might actually be able to hit you and... And... Oh, another Aldrich Faithful has invaded. That's fun. Aldrich Faithful Ash. Okay, but the lack of a space... I wonder what's going on. I feel like that must be a server glitch. But I... Mmm... Nice kick. Not... Okay. Jump and slam it. Oh, what? Well, okay. I, oh, interesting. I, interesting. Let's just run and let the Silver Knights do something. Wait, what are you? Oh, it's because I've got Untrue Dark on. So he thinks I'm the, I'm the guy. Wait, oh. Oh, that's even crazier in a funny way. So is it just their Catalyst equivalent and maybe their Bow equivalent? Maybe there's... I would guess either Catalyst and Bow or Catalyst and Sword. It is still crazy that it took... That it took about two years before we got a single male Catalyst character. And Hazo is cool. I love Hazo. But it's really funny that they also had to go out of their way to make him a boxer. They're sort of like, we can't make a wizardy male character. No one will want him. And then they put out Nuviet, who is the most wizardly ca wizardy Catalyst user, period. And everyone loved him. Because they were wrong. They were wrong about what their player base wanted. Well, to be fair, a lot about Nuviet is probably just... We didn't, oh, I forgot to reapply Tears. I'm stupid. You know, if I had either reapplied Tears or just not been as overzealous, that would have basically been a free human drag. We had a friend with us. Yeah, but... Mm -mm. Okay, so the big thing is, let's use our Karthus arc and just beat the crap out of this guy. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I think a big thing about it is just... Uh, I think Genshin, Mahoyu often forgets that a big strength in Genshin, of Genshin, in a lot of people's opinion, my, including mine, is the fact that it has a relatively gender-balanced cast. Because if I wanted to play a game that was almost all female characters, or almost all male characters, I have plenty of options. You know, the reason I play Genshin is in part because of that, not in spite of that. And I'm aware that there are a lot of people for whom that isn't true, which is part of why you have a lot of fandom gender wars, but it's just... It's very much a sort of... Trying to appeal to people who are going to like your game in spite of a lot of its aspects versus making the people who like your game because of what it is. It's... And given how mainstream and popular it is, and the fact that there are a lot of people who play the game just for the characters they like, even if they hate a lot of the others, or God forbid, hate the gameplay itself, that is somewhat legitimate, but it's... they. I feel like they've been trying to make Star Rail, if anything, their more casual, friendly game in the specific sense of giving out a bunch of free pulls and doing stuff like, you know, the free Dr. Ratio gimmick, but... I don't know. It's... And I definitely feel as if turn-based is definitely more casual than an action RPG, even a relatively friendly, casual friendly action RPG, just because it does get rid of one typical kind of skill ceiling. And please don't frostbite me. Okay. His sword is way too fast for me to actually try to... I do kind of outreach him, but Irithyll's straight sword is just... 
really good to begin with, too, but, hmm. I don't have any Ash and Asses. Big thing is... I don't want to have to just wait for him to decide to actually fight me. So if I just... Maybe I could be really funny. I could just mess with the elevator and force him to engage me that way. If I just take the elevator up and prevent anyone from dragging the elevator down, I could maybe arguably force him to engage me that way. Yeah, it... I mean, in the end, though, it's... I think it's good that there are gacha games, and, well, games in general that appeal to all kinds of audiences. I just don't like when games unexpectedly alienate their fan bases or feel like they have to switch things out. When, if things are, you know, still profitable, they still have fans who like their stuff. It's very... It's, it's very short-sighted. And especially for a game... For gacha-type games and other games that... I do feel as if the one advantage of a microtransaction model... The one thing that makes it maybe a necessary, necessary evil... Is that it enables games to survive... By having a relatively small number of very dedicated fans... Instead of just having to appeal to the largest number of people possible or... As some people, including me, might like to say, the lowest common denominator. Because a game for everyone is ultimately a game for nobody. It's like how... And to be fair, a lot of people actually unironically like Applebee's now, especially because it's relatively cheap. But I remember years ago, people would point to Applebee's and talk about... The reason compromise doesn't make, make people happy, and the biggest example was Applebee's. Because no one really likes Applebee's, but no one really hates it. So whenever you have any kind of, and we're just staring each other down, any kind of real dispute over where to eat, they go to Applebee's, because it's not going to make anyone happy, but it's not going to make anyone mad. And I feel that's what happens when you try to have a, you know, appeal to literally every single person. You know, in the end, Gasha is still a fundamentally depraved gaming model, because it literally has to cultivate gambling addictions in people. But I feel like some other kind of quote-unquote pay-what-you-want model, or in its own way, a subscription model. Because in the end, paying for the Battle Pass and the Primo Pass per month is about the same as, you know, subscribing to an MMO like Final Fantasy XIV. And that's how I justify it to myself, that, you know, I could either do that, do those passes, or I could do a 14 subscription. And to be fair, a lot of 14 is free now. But still, it's... Every time I see some reference to characters or weapons in the open world or play a really good story quest, I think if this was a normal game or a subscription-based game, you would get the character from their story quest. You would get their weapon from finding in world, because if you've played through Chen Yu Vale, they literally have Shen his Calamity Queller buried stuck in a rock. And when I saw that, that's what I really that's when I really thought that just in any other kind of game, that's where you would get Calamity Queller. And then, maybe you get Constellations Refinements from doing character-related achievements and challenges. And that would be really cool. But, that's not how Gasha works. It's not how it can work. Which sucks. You know, one day, one day, it will be free of financial concerns, and people will just make really good video games for the sake of making really good video games. But today is not that day, and... You know, that guy is smart for not wanting to engage two-player invaders and a hostile NPC enemy at once. But this is really dragging things out. If we chased him down the two of us, we could make it happen. But... I just need... You've got a sword and a power flame. Are you gonna try to Karthus it up? I think we're going, we're going for the gank now. We're going for the two-on-one now. Okay. I do think that... And I was I have had discussions with a lot of friends of mine. Well, they were old discussions because most of my most people I know of most of my IRLs, for lack of a better term, to just stop playing Genshin entirely. But we would have discussions on you know should they add new weapon types, and if so, what should they add? And the the argument we always had was usually I was saying they shouldn't add new weapons because there aren't a lot of things they could reasonably do with new weapons that they can't already do with the weapon types they already have. 
You have stuff like signs they could do with poems. They had stuff like black with pole or prototype star glitter. And then they went out of the way and made Arlequino have a poem that turns into an actual scythe, which I guess is kind of the, you know, cutting the baby in the half or slicing the Gordian knot equivalent, but I... Okay, well, oh, interesting. We can kind of trade. Okay, interesting. I just... One, and I... Okay, and... Really? Really? Okay, I just... Real, what? Thanks. That Aldrich Faithful is... You are literally here to prevent this guy from progressing. Why are you trying to treat this as a fight club? You are worse than useless. Okay. I literally don't even... I'm not gonna be any help to you. I'm just gonna die. If you're not gonna help me, you can fight him yourself. Okay. Henneke. But... As I was saying, and the big point that I always made, and I, I hold myself to it, is that adding new weapon types would just dilute the role pool. There would be, and of course, you're right there, immediately on wake up. Fun! Okay. And I don't have any kind of, oh, but that stagger actually works quite well. Okay. Annoying. Annoying. So he's dead, that's good. We go through here, the giant should help us, and I think they quit out. They probably saw their bonfire go on and just decided to give up. Okay, but the... Oh, interesting, but what if I... Okay, originally there's supposed to be a giant here helping out, but he's just not here. Interesting, well, alright. Yeah! And I think if they, ma if they make good things from fishing or something, that could be legitimate. I could see maybe them adding new weapon types after Tavat Arc is done, but absolutely no sooner. And I think a lot of it is... Honkai 3rd has added new weapon types, but it's a very, very different situation for a number of reasons. Well, actually, it's one reason with multiple application and, and it's, you know, it's a game with a lot of character odds. You're kind of supposed to just get into one character to an extent, and then get really into making them strong, getting their alts, their stigmata, their weapon, etc. And it, you know, stigmata and weapon. But, that also means that they're generally going to use the same weapon between alts, which means... Okay, so we can help out Sirius. Let's do this thing again. Which means that if you like a character and get their weapon, you'll probably be able to use it at least decently well in other versions of that character. It's fundamentally different, especially since Genshin doesn't really have alts yet. Wait, what? We we get summoned from invasion when we're in another world already? Wait, what just happened? What? 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 What just happened? Huh? Okay. But, as I was saying... Maybe after Tavat Arc ends, and I feel like... If Conria and Celestia are both years... Oh, because we're getting summoned. The f Wait. What? Okay, so we got dragged out of helping Cirrus to invade someone. And then we got dragged out of the invasion to... Help Sirius? That's... Profoundly bizarre. But, as I was saying... I can't imagine there are going to be a lot of... Living people in Connery and Celestia... To be playable. What a British way to spell Grandad. Okay. So we take down Hodrick here, literally. We got a loading screen. And Sirius. Can we backstab this guy? Oh, we... We got... One tap. That is... Quite crazy. Okay, the big thing is... I know we can... Flame mark him up if I really try to, so... One and... Oh, wow! Okay. That's new. Okay, so will I spawn back in... At the summon sign or at the bonfire? That's the real question. But, as I was saying... 
They... The idea... Okay, and that's, that's convenient. The idea, at least, of Archon alts for characters like Raiden, and frankly, especially Venti and Zhongli, certainly, almost certainly, has not slipped in Mahoyo's minds. It's just... They're saving them for arcs in which they won't have a lot of entirely original characters to make. And I think that Abyss Kaya and maybe Delusion or outright Fatui Diluc are also pretty obvious options for character alts if and when they have them. Three, one, two. Good combo. Like that. So, now you're chasing me, which means we're gonna have her take him down a little until he switches aggro, I think. So, he doesn't really dodge, which is nice. Can use that combo pretty well. So, let's actually just counter your pyromancy. And are you getting any healing off? No, we actually successfully interrupted that. That's good. So, what are you doing now, Mr. Hodrick? So, just one, two... Three. Actually, I'm, no, that's not warmth, that's power within. Two. Oh, but you're. Oh, and of course you're accessing up. Despise you with a fiery passion. But your stuff can clang too. Your stuff can clang too. Fun. Big thing is, and oh, we're out of Estus, which means. Oh, but we could just use power within to an extent. Oh, interesting. Well, I was just thinking about the idea of... Okay, so you're up against the wall, and now you're dead. Thank you. Glad to help. So, Cirrus goes back to Fire Link, I believe. But, the idea of maybe... Electro Wanderer maybe going back to Scar Mode is interesting. I feel like it might be something like... If anything, he'd probably be Kunikuzishi. I think... As someone who... I have very conflicting feelings on Raiden as a character. In large part because I'm, because I'm also a very big Skarmouche guy. This probably will not surprise you, but... This model was in part based on Skara. But... I also... Wandry is also undeniably the best exploration mobility character in the game. Closest thing to actual flight. Really, really great for dailies fast. But just the fact that Wander erasing himself from Earman's Soul means... At, straight up. Straight up. Is that, at least right now, there isn't any real possibility of getting a real write-in apology to Skara. Which, beyond just something I would like as a Skaramouche fan. And as a Raiden fan who thinks that making Raiden completely innocent of everything that happened in Inazuma was the absolute worst thing they could have done for her character. Thank you, actually. Well, they did the job for us. Thank you. I helped out so much there. I did so much. But... I really love how they unabashedly made Arlequino a morally gray and complex character. I think it is arguably a little bit of a cop-out in the sense of the dialogue we had around her suggested, at least before Fontaine, that she was going to be outright evil evil. And I think it could be interesting to ally with and engage with characters like that. To have characters where, if they're playable, it really is just an alliance of convenience. But, aside from Detore, I like, actually, the fact that there's no character in Genshin who's pure, pure evil. And a lot of that is definitely just, if anyone's truly irredeemable, that makes it a lot harder for them to sell them to roll for. But, I think... I think, personally, just my personal beliefs, I don't like the idea of believing in anyone, even very, very loathsome people. It's pure and absolute evil. Because righteous hatred is a very, very dangerous emotion. 
there you are. Fingers over what I'll promise. Thanks for your assistance. Rest in peace and I can die. Last thing, vow to serve as a knight, except it's grateful. Is your faithful knight, wherever, whenever, I'll should turn against you, she'll never waver. Thank you very much. Okay. So I know that with Aldrich, I can get Dark Moon Bow, which is completely useless, and a Life Hunt Scythe, which I don't think I'll be able to use at all with my build. I think it takes 30 faith, which I will not get to. So, that takes... Oh, actually, I could get close, and that might be useful, depending on how good the healing effect is, and that'll deal. Dark damage. Drept as he slowly devoured the god of the Dark Moon. Received the form of a young, pale girl in hiding, which would be... Crossbreed Priscilla from Dark Souls 1, who is a big, fluffy-tailed dragon woman with ambiguous parentage, strongly implied to be a dragon-human hybrid. However, that worked out in Dark Souls. But, call upon it forever and true, busting the moon. Okay. So, there's a dungeon prison area we want to go to somewhat next. There's also a little bit past Aldrich. So, I will go through the arena. Yeah, Inazuma definitely falls the most. I think the best overall Archon quest was Fontaine's. It got me to cry a number of times, which is always a good sign. But Frankly, I think the most emotionally resonant quest in the game, period, was Dia's story quest. As an unabashed Dia stan, I will never forgive how much they did her dirty. Part of the reason I actually try to use Linny as much as possible is because he's the only character in the entire game who can arguably make good use out of Dia's kit. Because it's the best pyro element defense he can have, period. If you want to use Kaz instead of Zhongli and have three power members in party. So this is... It's here. Oh, so this is where Guinevere was. Well, Illusion Guinevere. Sun Princess Ring. Let's check that out. That is... Sun Princess Ring. Up here and that... Gradually restores HP, being a sunlight. Gradually restores several heavenly children. That... That could be very, very nice to have, actually. Eh, eh. We'll be alright. No amazing chest ahead. This is so sad. No chest ahead! <laughs> they know. Yeah, sadly. Sadly, entirely illusory visions. Poor Guinevere. Yeah. Well. I don't remember. Does Linny actually... Does Linny have... Does Lenny have Interruption Raz on Suwon? Because I know that everyone else who's relevant does. But I don't remember Winnie. To an emoji. Yeah, I... You might be able to do it with a slash like on Discord, but I'm not entirely sure. But... The big thing is... We don't need that much from Eldritch Faithful proper. I think I will go back and try doing a bit of grinding there, but... I think it was Church of the Dark Moon. Okay, so we'll take Blue Sentinels. Escape character. Oh, but I think... So that did work, but I don't think he needed two slashes. Maybe. Okay, but... There was a drop down in Church of Yorshka. And I just want to check the DS3 and Orlando map. There was... Is there an illusory wall somewhere, or... Is there... Yeah, that doesn't open at all. Okay. So we did see pretty much everything that was meaningfully useful in any kind of way. Alright. So over in Church of Yorshka, this is where Henri was. The assassin was here. Big thing is, I'm not sure how I got to that drop down. Whether it might be from Church of Yorshka or something else. Don't see any kind of illusory, I mean, Irithyll dungeon or something else. Okay, okay. That matches up, but... So yeah, exactly, that's why. He's the only Fontaine character who doesn't have Interruption Resin Kit, so he's the only one who always, arguably, has some reason to have Dia on him. You know, if it works, it works. If it works, it works. 
So let me see. Illusory Walls in Dark Souls 3. Are there any others in... Irithyll, Retmos Alcove. I got that. Magic Clutch. Street Till It Ends. Doris's Nearby Gate. Pontiff Knights. Back the way you came. Down the stairs. To the right. Pontiff Knights. Walk down. Crystal Lizard. Railing is an illusion. So that's where we'd get Doris's Gnawing. Chicken McDonald. Spiral staircase behind the Gwyn statue on the opposite side, near the end of the quest. Valuable item at the end. There's one more thing there then. The Church of your watch go back the way we came, down the stairs, Pond of Night. I'll just beat the crap out of the Pond of Nights and then kill that evangelist. Okay. Yeah, I. I very much enjoy Lenny's gambling. And part of it is just the fact that I use Dia instead of something like Zhongling, though to be fair. Zhongling is, as of course, more AoE focused, and I... Lenny is single target focused, and... You know, in that case, you'd probably want to run him as a boss killer, which I normally try to do, but... That's the point of Night Patrol, and then... Which means running him with Dia in single target, and he... He is a little bit underwhelming as a result. But he's still fun when I can get him to work. The real sad thing is... I actually went for Arlequino's weapon. Because of the deal with the side transformation on it. And... To be fair, a lot of it was also just... I didn't use Bennett with her. Partially because... She doesn't work well with Circle of Impact. And partially because I was trying to use Winnie and Abyss on the other side. Yeah. Wait, so is this the... This is not the illusory one, is it? Or... Secret passage attacking... Illusory railing with... Illusory stairs? Oh, that's crazy! But... Okay. Those pot of nuts are going down much easier now. So, I hear the evangelist she should drop... A strong dark spell, which I will not even be able to use. And I think... I should be able to do the honorary marriage part. So I think we can... If we sneak up, I can get one quick backstab off. The really annoying thing with these enemies is that when they stand up, it counts as them falling for a little, which means that... They stagger you. They poise break you up upon their own standing up. Okay, dodge and backstab. Thank you. So the more reliably she does that, the grab attack, the more reliably I can just kill her. Okay, big thing is, let's cart this up, and... What? What's happening? Okay. Another, and then can we just... Oh, well, we can't poise break if you... Oh, dumb, dumb, and... What? Oh! It's your weapon. The programmer has entered the Mushin Eigen Twitch chat. Insane. Yeah, exactly, you know, commissions for everybody. Maybe I commissioned you to do the CSS for my Streamlabs stuff. It's an option. But I, as I was saying, as I was saying, Deal looks fun too. I like that they made Deal look good again, arguably, just because He's one of the better options to use with Claude Retainer. Because I've been trying to get every new character as they come out. And I've been able to pretty reliably do that so far. And it's been interesting how... It just said N. Just said N. Oh, you can turn that off. I just thought it just said N. So... Hmm. Well, if it works, it works. But as I was... Saying, huh? Interesting. I mean, the big thing is Katsu. I mean, you know better than me because you made her own model. But I'm just wondering. Oh, I should probably pick this up. Oh, Witchery Branch. Well, that won't be all that useful. I guess just what a good way to, you know, a design that would iterate on this, be more, be more complicated without being kind of visually busy. Okay, and dodge! Thank you. Oh, so we could get a hit off while she was charging that up. 
Oh, Plunge Tail. I, I used to be big on Hu Tao, but I didn't even think about trying. Think about Hu Tao Plunge is just. If I ran her, if I ran Hu Tao Plunge, I would. It'd be in it with Zhan Yun. Then Zhan Yun's healing would be getting in the way of Hu Tao's A4 passive being active. Which is why I like using Gomming. I've actually never tried Punch Deal with, with her, but I've used Gomming a good deal because I got some cons for him. And also just, I have R5 Serpent Spine, and that is by far Gomming's best weapon. And that's part of why my Zhao Punch team is only about as good as my Gomming team, using Zhan Yun on both. And you have C64 is on the Zhao team, but the thing about it is, R5 Serpent Spine is by far Gomming's best weapon. But the R5 deathmatch I have on Zhao is by far not. Oh, but it... Let me see. It... Huh. It's still showing up as the as the emote for me. So I'm not sure what's going on. We just got a new spell. This is... Oh, right. We don't have Na yet because we have to... Summon Carla. We have to rescue Carla. Deranged Evangelist. Great Rings next morning. Feast on foes. Bring the deep, often slip, walled in the darkness, intoxicated by its peril. So, it'll be a while until we can use- Oh, okay, okay. Well, my chat reflects... Let me see. Oh, hi, hello. My chat shows it as an emo, so I'm wandering entirely. What's going on? Well, in the end, in the end, the, the emotion and the sentiment is reliably conveyed. No matter what form the emote takes. And isn't that the most important thing? Self-attack with... Furina. That's fair. And... I guess the big thing is... How do you reliably get... What? Oh, okay, well, alright. How do you reliably swirl Pyro using VV? Because when I've done Furina, Johnny and Plunge teams... Well, okay. Fair, fair. You have, you have a scientist's experimental mindset. That's what's going on. That's fair. And I guess... A lot of people like... The Hu Tao fear in a dynamic. Based on the one time they've met. So... To the extent that people like... I mean, I won't lie. Part of the reason I like running New Viet and Fiorina together is because of their... In-game connections. You know, yeah, exactly. It's... You know, I actually saw a friend and made this joke earlier today, you know, how the new Viet Farina dynamic is just the Hu Tao Zhang Li dynamic again. Yeah, died, died 2021, born 2023, welcome back Zhang Tao. And, oh well, I, oh my goodness, charge into, oh, charge, right, right, I remember, I, that was silly. I remember seeing people talk about Hu Tao, Zhang Yun Plunge. I want to kill those guys when I get my blood scene back. But if, if I keep acting a fool. If I keep acting a fool. Well, the big thing is, in order to progress any further, I need to go back to Irithal Dungeon. Over by Distant Manor Bonfire, which isn't crazy, but... Retrieve that blood scene, that might... I think that'll be one more level up, which should help with... If I'm using pyros on something, that will help with the pyros. But this is the question of if I use them on something. So let's just kill these guys real quick. A few extra souls, I guess. Dot oh, alright, and I okay, cool, and well, alright now. Okay, good. You did not have to break my tears. Okay, and that is close to close to a full heal. But I definitely think that I wanna try Hu Tao Johnny and Jump Punch sometime. Because even if it isn't crazy strong, especially since I've actually got C1. Oh, oh, I should I actually want to wear that crown. Because starting with Dark Souls 2, I've started wearing crowns as... Crowns is my head armor, because I like how it looks, which means that... Maybe I go for... Maybe I go for a crown. Crown toggle? Crown toggle? The thing about it is... I like the idea of having 
the option, you know, a toggle for something like facial hair, especially since, you know, I do have a bit of a gender-balanced audience, you know, and I play a lot of games which have oftentimes male-skewed audiences or more balanced audiences like Souls or Genshin, and I think, you know, because of that, I'd like a design that would appeal to, you know, like I said, a balanced audience. I think it'd be interesting because, you know, some guys, you know, they've tried a facial hair thing and it's just landed like, it's flown like a Led Zeppelin. But I think, but a lot of that is also just because the designs are frankly sucked. Oh, well, okay, in that case, I need to try that. I need to try that, then that is exciting. But as I was saying, and I was talking to some people about that, I mean, there are some people who just don't like it. But given that there's a lot of outcry on both sides about the fact that we haven't we have not gotten a single guy in Genshin with facial hair yet playable that might be Kabatama that might be Varka especially if you if you saw that design doc leak from a few years ago at least one of them will have a bit of a bit of fur on his face but it's home, the designs I've seen that people have hated it's just there were these awful patchy garbage beards you know, they looked like teenagers and it, it was also just, they tried too hard to make them look realistic. When they don't do that with the normal hair. The normal hair is just largely solid shape colors with some shading. But they went for a weirdly realistic approach for, in my opinion, no good reason. And I think that's part of why the aesthetic just didn't work. Yeah, just, when Gallagher came out in Star Rail... I remember a lot of people, a lot of players, male and female, exactly, exactly, literally Gallagher, a lot of people, just male and female, were just, finally, a guy with a bit of fuzz on his face, because that, that was a character archetype in a market that they just not tapped at all, but, I need to play more Guilty Gear, I did one Strive stream, doing just some casual matches with friends, but, Slayer is a cool aesthetic. I feel as if a possible design concept could be a slightly dandyish gentleman. Your know, ob obvious Slayer influence. Obvious Slayer influence. I did think about the idea of being a vampire at some point, but there are just too many of those. Way too many of those. The idea right now is sort of some combination of Bloodborne Hunter and Personified Curse. Or personified misfortune or something. I don't know. That's a bit more tuny, but I don't hate that. It's just... The name I chose for myself is tuny enough to begin with. But... I don't know. The big thing is if we... If we reach a business agreement. If we reach a productive agreement that is beneficial to us both. We would be able to spitball things. And frankly... You know, you're, you're the potter. I'm the clay. I'm, I'm not going to go around like a lot of other people do and pretend I know better than the artists. But, I don't know. It's just, I feel like, the thing about it though is that to combine a youthful appearance with a bit of fuzz would basically mean I am a leprechaun, which I, I wouldn't necessarily hate, but I don't know. Yeah, exactly, exactly. We go for the leprechaun concept. Not the worst thing ever. But, but that said, it... And this, I might have mentioned this to, to you boys before, but my original idea, what I originally wanted to do back when I first started, was th first thinking about, thinking about starting streaming, was getting a few other people and to do sort of an elemental creatures kind of group concept. And I, as you might expect, and a lot of it was actually influenced by the Souls builds I usually like running, because Pyromancy's been a mainstay. Pyromancy's and other kinds of fire-oriented weaponry have been a mainstay in all the runs I've done so far. Because of how well they've worked with the builds I've tried to run. As in the stupid non-build with leveling every single stat equally. So that was part of a while like the fire. But actually, and this, your mileage, your mileage may vary based on whether you think this is cool or just kind of weird and cringe. But the idea at first was... Basically, the sort of biblical creatures in the Old Testament, because they've got the Levi they've got Levi Leviathan, Behemoth, and Ziz, which you might, yeah. So in other words, if you started streaming with me, 
M maybe it could be different kinds of fire. I could be dark fire and it could be light fire or something. I don't know. I don't know. If that happens. Or if, if you go for a character concept in any kind of way. Because in the end, it... Well, actually, actually, given that you said that if we actually managed to pull off that multiplayer Elden Ring campaign, for lack of a better term, you'd want to be running a faith build. That would lend itself to you being sort of less sinister fire in me since I'd be running Arcane, being evil fire with all the blood flame and such. That could be a cool dynamic to maybe go with. But as I was saying, if most people would probably know, un wow, Dungeon Bonfire is really close. I wonder if this is going to be part of the same category as Anorlando and this Profane Capital might be part of. Okay, Irithal Dungeon is separate then, so I would imagine that Profane Capital might be part of that too. It is still funny that Cathedral of the Deep just has four bonfires all on its own to itself. But, as I was... Okay, so we've encountered one. Locked door. I'm marking these down for later in a notepad document so I don't lose them. Thank you, thank you. But yeah, I was confusing the locked door. I ac I turned it off for something and forgot to turn it back on. But basically what happened was, is I went down to kill that evangelist, and that locked door was actually the one I'd marked. But I thought the one I'd marked had been the Anorlando door, which was just inaccessible. Yeah, yeah I'm back. Don't worry. But... Yeah, but Katsu, in case you have any interest in helping out and... Joining a six-man Elden Ring playthrough if your schedule and, you know, desire to suffer with other people in a group setting permits. The ideas would be, you know, comparing it to something like Final Fantasy XIV, there'd be melee DPS strength, a tank running HP and stamina, and carry rate to wear heavy armor, magic DPS with intelligence wizard, a healer with some actual, with good de damage capabilities actually off and good buffing, with Faith, and then kind of a ranger-esque character with range and melee options on Dex, and then someone running a funny arcane build, which would probably be me, just because of... What in God's name? Okay. Ungodly Shriek. With arcane, which is actually kind of an equivalent of... Oh, I did not mean to do that. Of Dark Souls 3 Lux stat, but the difference is that arcane actually has a lot of things that use it, and almost all of those things are really, really good. Because the cheesiest one, but that said, in order to use everything that uses it, is one of the ideas would be to ensure things don't get too cheesy. Want to... Oh, and we can open that. That's good. I think... To limit the degree to which we could cheese the game with six players, I would... I think I said this before. Keep friendly fire on. Which would also lead to a lot of fun shenanigans. But beyond that, also, hopefully... Plan our builds out in advance, so that... Any weapon whose highest requirement is our... Okay, the second elect door. Is the stat we individually focus on we'd be able to use. Which, besides giving us a lot of options, would, of course, prevent us from getting too overpowered. Oh, and right, third cape... Third... Third condition would be, ideally... The stat we focus on, we have to get to 99 by the end of the game. The tank would have two stats to focus on, so I don't think I'd do that. And in the end, it's a question of... Yo, know, once we act- once I- I- we actually got a- Oh, thanks! Thank you for pushing me. Epic Tower of Latria moment, I guess. Oh, and they got- They got the worms in here? They got the leeches in here? Okay, well, whatever. I- Okay. Let's just keep staggering you. Oh, okay. Thanks, and I- Oh, interesting. I, how can I hit you? Can I hit you? Okay, I can kinda hit. Okay, but I don't have my torch equipped right now, which means I need to- Come on, come on. Okay, we hit- I'll need to re-equip it if we get leeches on us. So that one died. Oh, that drops great magic shield. Oh, and it's actually got... Interesting. Oh, thank you. Hi. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Karthus Flame Mark makes this so much better. Okay, time for fire. Wait, was that a... That is a good message. That is an incredibly helpful message. Okay. But... 
you know, once we got a group together, we'd all have to hash out things together. I would not dream of being the unelected dictator of the Elden Ring run, but I have some ideas in advance, which I'd be more than happy to consult with everyone else playing about, so that we get the best, most interesting, and most entertaining experience for every party involved. Old Sorcerer. Okay, and we got another one down here, so we'll just burn you up. But, in the end, the big thing is, I would imagine that if it ever actually got off the ground, there might be some conflict between people over who gets to be what kind of build. And I feel like there would be ways to get around that, but betrayal ahead, so is there just going to be a crappy item? Or sold the name of soldier? Or are they just talking about the backstab? But, like I was saying, if it ever happened, which, you know, I hope it would happen, but the logistics would be complicated that I wouldn't, you know, it's not the kind of thing I can say, this will definitely happen, and if it doesn't, it's because I was sabotaged and stabbed in the back or something. It's just, oh, right, I need to, need to bring the shield back up. Oh, it's interesting that these guys are actually about as weak as they were in settlement. And they're dropping about as little souls as... Oh! Oh, right. Okay, I didn't even notice my HP, max HP dropping. So that's the gimmick of those jailers, the ones holding those branding irons over there is that when you're in their sight, they rapidly drop your max HP. They can kill you that way, which is crazy. Okay, so if I plunge attack on you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Good damage, good damage, and get rid of you before you make my life any worse. Okay. And okay, nothing on there, and oh, thank you for throwing your fecal matter at me. That isn't disgusting at all. Okay. These remind me there are also, there are enemies in Bloodborne that appear in one specific late game area. The unseen village of Yahargul. Oh, you are throwing a lot of food. That's a lot of food. You are... These coffins that are full of corpses and they scurry about in their various limbs and toss these flesh clump projectiles that you in general would just make your life annoying. So there are three locked doors here in Irithal Dungeon. Okay, I literally forgot to go back and marry Henri. And by marry, I mean kill. Okay. Well, not actually kill. It's more like... More like just stabbing a sword into a corpse, but... It's definitely up there. But, okay, so let's not get pushed down this time. If I'm going down again, I'm doing it of my own will and volition. But that hollow pushing me down was actually really, really funny. Where you're playing dead, and... So where is... I imagine... So where's my... Point dead... Who and where? Or should I know Chardon? So who's got... Oh, interesting. Oh, so it was literally just a jump scare. That's hilarious. Okay. So it's a fourth locked door, which means I should mark that down, just so I know I've been through the area. There's gonna be one locked door that we won't be able to get until we progress through and come back, because we'll need a key. That will unlock our dark magic vendor, and is someone running at me? Oh, hello, friend! Not friend, but- Oh my goodness, and- What? Oh, okay, die, die, die. Die, 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 and... Okay, so our Estus healing is down a bit. Seems like there were more jailers, and maybe I just fell farther than I expected to initially. So that's locked. The Estus debuff is gone now, I think. This would be a decent time to- reapply Karthus Flaymark. Karthus Flaymark is, you may or may not know, is actually less 50% longer than all of the other weapon buffs, which is part of what makes it arguably the best in some respects, because it's 90% of your spell buff, which, at least comparing raw numbers there, means as in the power of your catalyst, your casting tool, which is based on a number of things. Well, it's just based off of magic stats, but in theory, Dark Blade, Sunlight Blade, and Crystal Magic Weapon, which all require a lot more stat investment to use at all, have higher pure multipliers, but they also, they last 60, 60 seconds while Karthus lasts 90, which is pretty cool. It allows you to keep it up if you want. So you're going to try to push me, aren't you? 
Well, this may surprise you, but I don't exactly intend to let that happen. Okay, so is that a drop from an enemy, or is it just always there? Big thing is, I'm pretty sure there's at least one illusory wall in here. Especially since this doesn't open from this side. Oh, but it's actually locked. Locked, not just doesn't open from the side, which means that it's... There's gonna be a key somewhere then. Gonna have to go probably get off a of jailer's corpse, I would imagine. We'll see what happens. I... The trail ahead, and it's not... Okay, okay. So what that means is... Once we see an enemy from afar, we reapply flame arc, switch to our more soul shield, and then... Also probably put on our... Use our Ash and Estus, so that if we have to cast... Well, to be fair, aside from Tears and even then, not really. There isn't exactly a spell that I need to cast with any kind of urgency. Guy who really, really wants Dark Moon Ring for an extra attunement slot. But I hear a... There's a Crystal Wizard somewhere, and what is... What's shrieking? What is shrieking at me? Does not open from the side! The Dark Souls Classic. The Dark Souls Classic. The funniest thing... I remember, and this is part of why Inazuma Exploration is arguably unmatched. Fontaine is good too in the water spawn, but I think if you gun to my head, best Genshin Exploration has to be either... Okay, die, die. Die, die already, die already. What? Oh, what? Huh? Okay. I didn't know you had a grab attack. I did not know you had a grab attack. Is either Inazuma or Samaru. Because Inazuma had the hardest puzzles by far. There were, and I think I've talked about this with T-Boys before, but... The fact that they had an outright magic square puzzle... That I actually ended up needing paper to solve, and then... One of the puzzles on Seirai I also ended up using... The rock turning puzzle is part of the world quest, I also ended up using... Pen and paper to solve that. The fact that there were puzzles that... Pen and paper could meaningfully help in solving was really, really cool. It really made me feel like the exploration was on the next level in terms of being thought out. and It, it wasn't really hard, hard. There was nothing that really had an execution barrier. It was just some things might have required a guide, and if you wanted to solve it yourself, you would probably want to use pen and paper. It wasn't really a meaningful barrier. It was just they had things that could be a meaningful challenge in an intellectual sense, not just a grindy or mechanical sense, which I found really enjoyable. I... I understand why they haven't brought it back, because a lot of people did despise Inazuma Exploration because of that, but that's why I loved it so much. And like I said before, I feel as if... Especially now that they got stuff like Star Rail, which explicitly is a... You know, a game where they play with a lot of roles, even though there was crazy amounts of characters to appeal to char people who, for lack of a better term, really like rolling for characters specifically. I feel like targeting, and to be frank, if the leak's about actually adding... That's not illusory. Actually adding a, f a seventh ascension to get to level 100 is true. Oh, oh, that's magic pond resin, pale pond resin. Let me actually see what the description of that is. Magic. Blood red substance found within more to the so-called resin than meets the eye. Yeah. I honestly have no idea what that can mean. Okay, so in that case, I think we open this up and- Oh, it's a- Oh, one of those half-free dragons. It's good. It's good that I saw that. That could have probably killed me in a second. But... I feel like, since they've got other games that are meant to appeal to casuals at this point, that casuals are openly jumping shit for from Genshin. That targeting a more hardcore audience in some way, in the sense of getting the people who really like Genshin already to play it more and, you know, for lack of a better term, you know, as much as I hate to admit it, maybe spend a little more on it, might end up being a more rewarding strategy in the long run than just trying to compete in the casual game market when other things are going to dilute that further and further as time goes on. In the end, I'm biased. I liked the hard puzzles. I liked the highly vertical and sometimes confusing exploration. I, I, actually, I explored all of Sumeru, and I think at least one of you can sympathize, before they added the underground map. And I like that they added the underground map. I think it might have been a bit overzealous in the sense that 
I like what they did with some quests in that it's revealed piece by piece as you explore through the underground. You don't see it all at once. I like when they do that. But at the very same time, even though I understand why a lot of people didn't like it, in a perverse sort of way, I actually enjoy the times that I got lost. Yeah, hard, hard puzzles are good. If you can get around them with a guide, it's not really a meaningful barrier. It's just... <sighs> there are a lot of people who really are uber casual and honestly don't even like the game. See, the game itself is just things I have to suffer through to get Prima Gems to roll for characters instead of Prima Gems as a reward in addition to just getting to do cool things and play around with the characters in the open world. Because, and maybe this is just me being me, but when I've got cool characters who are especially strong on their own without buffs, like Wander when I first got him, Arlequino and Nuviet when I first got them, I've spent hilarious amounts of time just going around and fighting bosses and enemies in the open world, not to grind for their rewards in any way, shape, or form, just because exploring around, seeing areas that I haven't been to in a while, and just beating the crap out of enemies with kind of overpowered characters is something that I personally found fun. Or when Obama was back at Polo, Portugal, the profane capital. Cruel joke the jailers played on would-be escapees. So will that one open the door in the first area too? Because I think it opens the one on the left over here. Where is that crystal lizard too? But, as I was saying also, I think this is the one. Samaru, the coolest thing Samaru did period. I think that, there we go. I think that kind of got close with what they did in, oh, so we can use this to drop down. Oh, and we already dropped down, which means we want to go down to the lower area, we'll have to find another way in. Well, whatever. This is almost definitely the worst place to go anyway. Oh, there's the profane capital. We need to find a free Sigward. Bellowing Dragon Crest Wing, that'll be good for when we actually try using sorceries. But is I... What is that? Oh, just a normal undead. But the fact that the second Sumeru patch, the one that added the first Sumeru Desert area, added a nice cave. This kind of reminds me of Lost Bastille in DS2. Big concave area with a bit of vision to the outside. More like a hollowed out mountain than a cave proper. Would that be a karst? I'm not sure. I don't know what a karst is. I've seen the word at least three times in my life and I still haven't looked up an actual definition. A true Philistine, this one. But I, as I was saying, okay, but I need more Ashen Essence. That's right. Gotta get the drop on these guys. But as I was saying, the massive interconnected underground area in Hypostyle Desert connecting some of the other areas. The underground exploration was probably at its best in initial Sumeru Desert. And it's not that what's, what we had since has been bad per se, but it was by far the most they really did in it, and the most unabashed they were about just making it kind of confusing at times. The most unapologetic they were. Samara was really cool, and I would argue with it. As in, Samara Jungle was really cool too, and I would argue argue that the single coolest puzzle in the entire game was probably, at least in my opinion, how in Aranyaka you go down inside a bit of a mountain, this big hollow mountain, kind of in the center of Samara Jungle. But you also go to a connected side area. But the thing about it is that you don't know it's connected until you've lowered the water levels in both areas and realize that the water levels in both are connected. And then at the very bottom you get a fight against a somewhat buffed perpetual mechanical array. And that was really cool because part of getting that available was beating a bunch of extra encounters with various ruined enemies around Samira, which was also a really cool optional objective. In the end I think it was ultimately healthy that they didn't release so many huge amounts at once like they did with Sumeru Jungle and Initial Sumeru Desert. But they were able to do some pretty cool things with them when they actually took advantage of that. But it, it did lead to a lot of dead patches, and I would say it was ultimately unhealthy for the game. But I do miss the crazy interconnectedness of Sumeru's Underground specifically. I'm just wondering about... I'm wondering how Notlon's gonna be. Because most leaks, reliable or unreliable, say it's gonna be really big. Silence ahead, and we can open that, kill that other crossbow dragon. Feel bad about this a little bit. And... Okay, so you're gone too. Then nothing here. Did it drop something, or am I just... Well, whatever. 
the newest area that they put out in Fontaine, as you may or may not know, is basically Fontaine Antonomia. And it's almost, it's pretty much entirely just underwater swimming exploration, which is cool. Mechanically, it's a lot of fun. And I think there is a strong argument to be made that a big reason that Fontaine's exploration in some ways... Actually, Fontaine's first patch, the one that added the Institute and the Fortress of Meripede, I would argue, was actually relatively complicated. It wasn't crazy crazy, but it got close to where it was before. And I had a lot of respect for it and had a lot of fun. In particular, Meripede being a tower of six floors with relevance to both the Archon Quest and its own huge story quest. And its own huge... Okay, let's get out of the way. And its own huge world quest was... A really, really fun design. Also, also, I am an unabashed Rathesley stan. I think any ship with Rathesley in it is good. But, also, he's Jotaro. Can't forget that. But, as I was saying, as I was saying, it was a really cool area. But I think there is a strong argument. You know, besides the fact that they also definitely want to make things a little simpler, just because people objected to the difficulty of exploration in Inazuma and Sumeru, they were focusing on the underwater mechanics. And I think it's undeniable that that gave them a bit more leeway to keep things cool without having to be all that complicated with the exploration. I love Rathesley so much. God bless him. But I... Okay, that was close to death. Luckily, we do still have tears up. But I do like... that he's a cryo DPS character who arguably, at least if you're using with Marcia Say, is best with a burn team, because the tyranny of Blizzard Strayer has gone on for far too long. And I say this as someone who really likes Friesen's idea, I feel as if they should, they definitely should have already, but I think it's very telling that they haven't done it yet. And the fact that they haven't done it makes me think that they probably never will. Made it so that, okay, another door that I need to get open from that side. That, so was it four or was it five? I think it, did I forget to get one locked door off? I think I might have. I think it's just four because I forgot to mark it when I opened up the side door leading to the drop off, but. People have been saying this for years, myself included. But they always should have had, basically, a form of freeze that doesn't slow down an enemy. That solely exists so that you can use characters like Aika on bosses. Because Aika is great for Abyss if you're running in a, you know, sort of low AoE situations with enemies like, say, the big one would honestly be Kyrogi, because you really want to kill them at the same time. But if you put her up against a boss, she can still work, but a lot of that crit rate and therefore a lot of her damage is just going straight down the crapper. So we've been... Okay, we were up here already. Okay. We just ended up dropping down, so the only way ahead is going down through here. But the big thing is, I know that... Carl is down here somewhere. Is she farther down, or I think she's probably farther down? Dark magic vendor. But... The fact that they haven't done it yet makes me think that they never will, which is sad. But I do appreciate that they're going out of their way. It was really, really funny, because when they were initially selling Dia, as you might have seen, they tried showing her as an enabler for a Melt Ganyu comp, and even in the trailer, all they showed was that Dia did not work as an enabler for a Melt Ganyu comp, which was hilarious in the saddest way possible. It's just, look, Ganyu can vape Melt her hits if she deliberately waits a while for Dia's thing to proc again, and also as someone off-field to make sure that the proc actually works, which is... As ridiculous as it sounds. I wonder what mimic... What's going to be in this mimic? Let's just cart this up and... Try cutting this dog down as fast as we possibly can. Okay. One, two, three... Oh, well, we missed. So we get a rump... There we go. Rab attack is punishable enough and... Goodbye, mimic. I will not miss you. We get to, if we get to prevent... Ca I think we'll get to the start of prevent capital, but I can't go too much longer. But, oh, and, oh, that drops an Estus shard. That's cool. And I think it's either 12 or 15 in total. Either way, we're getting sort of near the end of get it, being able to get more Estus. So what is that? Okay, that's a 
fake window, basically, not a door, but is that... That drops down to somewhere and is... What is that? That looks like some kind of enemy. Either way, I don't imagine I really want to do that, but... Oh my... Okay. Oh, none of these are jailers, though. That's good. Thought some of them were jailers, but no, they're all just... These kinds of undead. Good. So let's just... Okay, good! The reach on... Reach on cell swords is crazy, actually. It... I've been trying to use drain hammers, but... And to be fair, on enemies where I can actually connect for the full combo and reliably stagger lock them, or, you know, armored enemies in general, I guess it is. You know, this is more or less the way I should be doing it. Cell sword on anything without heavy armor, drain hammers on anything with heavy armor, and once I actually get 20 decks, then drain twin spears on anything with scales, I guess, which is, I mean, kind of silly, but, you know, whatever. Okay, die, and we stagger lock too, but, uh, crossbow's gonna be doing its thing. Oh, you haven't gone to... No, you did get it out, but it took you time to bring it back up. But I... Let's see, let's see. Yeah, but... Okay, that's not even a door, is it? It's not a door. But... Basically, what people have been saying about not on reliable or not is that... It's gonna be really big, but a lot of it might maybe be kind of empty. This is one of the mechanics we got in... Remuria, the sort of Fontaine out and economy is this illusory? Why are there for no illusory wall heads sad? Was the ability to have a dragon help us out and basically shoot us off in a direction? And given that Notlon is supposed to be a place of dragons, it seems that, and I would agree that it's probably going to be the case, that it was a dry run for some sort of dragon flight mechanic that we'll probably have a bit more control over than the Remuria equivalent did. So that was basically kind of just a fast swimming. But there might be a lot of empty space with, and the mechanic there to cross it. I don't know. But apparently there's going to be something that might, according to some somewhat reliable people, make specifically Cryo and Hydro better. Interestingly enough, not, not Pyro itself. Which people have said, reading between the lines, it might be something like some way to make burning better or more reliably get oh and a crystal wizard's right there i don't like that so let's see if i can kill that thing before it disappears let's just one oh no it disappeared so i i'm gonna need to find a way to reload the area fun i i'm not happy about no 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 luckily we can just go to the right and immediately drop down oh oh i wasn't dead a guy who forgot he had tears of denial of guy who forgot he had tears of denial up. But as I was saying... As I was saying... Basically, being able to consistently enable Mel, maybe without even having to have a pyro character in the party, and maybe even being able to reliably enable forward vape, which would be outright insane. Tears Pill of Denial... That's me! Tears Pill Denial Maxer... The Tearsful Denialer. Okay, but- oh, and I- okay, luckily you weren't able to push me off, but I did not avoid that in the way I would have liked to. But as I was- okay, kill another Jailer. You must die. You must die. Okay. Honestly, what I should have and could have done was switch out to some kind of projectile spell to try to hit the giant. But, let's see if I can fight him again like this and just slash at his arms like a real melee build should. As is, as is right and proper and- oh, oh, you are- okay, fun. Not. Okay. So now we're over here and- oh, no, no boys break? What? What? Oh, what? Huh? Excuse me? Well, that is a decently big bloodstain all gone. Keeps, keeps, keeps the, keeps the challenge up. Keeps the challenge up. Uh-huh. But just the fact... You know, that's, that's what you see right there. Just, if the enemy's got some crazy multi-hit combo they just can't poison them out of, then you don't try rolling them away because you're stupid. Like a certain someone playing Dark Souls 3 right now, you can just have your tears pop and then die anyway, which is... Not exactly the most fun thing in the world. Okay. 
Oh, whatever. Worse things have happened in my life than losing that bloodstain. For example, losing bigger bloodstains. Okay, cool. So I think if I'd gotten hit by that, that would have been leech barf if I recall correctly. So actually, it seems that staggering them is quickly actually makes their max health debuff go away. Seems like it. All right, so Crystal Lizard, all these hollows down here that hopefully won't kill me this time. Then, one, two, and oh, we, oh, okay, bad, bad, bad. That did not go well. So, one, two, as we can reliably get the drop on them, we can stagger them. It is very, very interesting. I would not ever dare call it good or even fun. But it's interesting how DS3's approach to points is, just because it varies so heavily. Because it's poise on attacks rather than poise all the time, which means a lot of these enemies who normally can be very easily staggered have got one attack that's just completely uninterruptible. I mean, these are supposed to be trash mobs too, it's just... That's how they decided to design their godforsaken game and... In God's name, am I suffering the consequences? Okay. Let's put this back up. Try to recover these souls as much and as fast as possible. See who can. Oh, goodness. Thank you. One, two. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Smash that down. And one. Okay, that actually hit the other. The reach on cell swords is actually a good deal better than I expected to be when I started using them. So, two guys with crossbows. Let's. I should have gone for the guy who's using his crossbow first, probably, but both of them were slow enough that in the end it didn't really matter. Guy who likes Lincoln Park. I. I might have mentioned this before to. I think to T Blaze, but. One day, eventually, I want to do a karaoke stream that is at least largely. New Metal in 2000s, early 2000s alternative. Alternative rock. But the big question is... When I do Linkin Park, do I try to learn how to rap myself and rapidly switch back between the singing and the rapping? Or do I bring someone else on to the rap portions? I think that might be... The second, if the logistics worked out, would probably actually be the more entertaining option. But... Obviously, there would be a few more moving parts. Okay. So over here, and that means we kill this guy. And maybe die this time, too. But right, nice. Okay, die. One, two, and... Oh, my. Oh, my. What? Okay. Oh, but thank you for killing the crystal lizard for us. I don't exactly hate that. So that means we gotta pop our tears again. And we need to drink a flask so we can pop our tears again. Oh, that's... I'm gonna have to take note of that, that he... Hear it. I mean, in the end, it's not like these giants are particularly gendered. One, two, and... Oh, alright, that was not what I expected there. And I... Dodge! Okay. Slash. Out of the way. How much are you gonna... If you go back to sleep... Go back to sleep... Gotta... Okay. Now you're gonna lie back down again, I think. How far do I have to get for you to... Do that? Okay, it really is that easy. How much damage you take when I slash you and... Well, you are roll out of the way after that, so... Dodge and... One... Okay, we can get two hits off, but I don't even see a health bar. That's whatever. One... Oh, that... I am going to have to sneak past it. Find another bonfire and... Dodge and... Oh, wow! One heck of a delay on that. So, dodge, and soul of a crestfall knight, and if I get down here, I presume, I could either attack its legs, which I don't think would do more damage, but at least be more... Oh, fun! So you hit me on the ladder, which procked my tears, and the tiny bit of fall damage I took falling down the ladder killed me. Nice! That did happen once before in a, one of those Aldrich invasions, actually. I.
It's not open, okay. Make funny noises without accidentally singing Viva, Viva La Vida challenge. Difficulty impossible. But... I was fighting somebody and I was trying to run away on a ladder who'd I, who'd I invaded. And they hit me on the ladder, procked my tears, and I fell off. And I said, okay, cool. Maybe I'll try to salvage this. And then I took a tiny tick of fall damage. And since Tears of Denial very specifically puts you back at 1 HP, that meant one of the most comical marginal deaths I've experienced in any Souls game period, but especially DS3. I was saying before that if you wanted to out Souls, Katsu, you should definitely start out with either Elden Ring or DS1 proper, and I 100% stand by that statement. And I think you can probably see why. Because this... There's no poise. It's easier to mess up making a build. And... It's just also just a lot faster. Yeah. Souls... Quite frankly, I would say that Sekiro and Dark Souls 3 are the only Souls game that games that really love to the idea of it. Souls games are crazy hard games that will kick your ass in just for its own sake and give you no quarter. Because all of the others, it's really more about you know, paying attention to enemies, learning their patterns, not getting greedy. But DS3 quite honestly is there are a lot more aspects, a lot more aspects of the game compared to all the others. I feel like Bloodborne gets close sometimes, but really mostly with the DLC. The base game isn't all of that crazy, and there are a lot of good ways to cheese a lot of hard content if you feel like you want to or have to. But DS3, there are a lot of skill barriers, especially early on, that just you can't even grind past to. Can't even grind past. For example. In most Souls games, the first boss is either pretty far out or kind of a joke. But the first boss of DS3, Gundir, Udex Gundir, which is a term you might identify as the title of a certain Hydro Dragon. It's leading to a lot of people, myself including, making a lot of finally Dark Souls and Genshin jokes when he was first coming out. But he, as I was saying, as I was saying, you can't level up until after killing that boss. And they did a similar thing in the original Demon Souls, actually, where the very first boss, Phalanx, was... You had to kill Phalanx before you were able to level up at all. But the difference was, is that Phalanx was really, really easy, and there were a lot of ways to kind of cheese the boss. Again? Oh, you're kidding. Okay. In that case, actually, the ladder's a trap. I can't go down the ladder. I just have to actually take the pitfall, because that is the fastest way down there. The, the shortest path in between two points. Big thing is, I've got... It's almost 11 where I am. I generally like hopping off around 11, just so that I don't keep up other people in the house too much. I think with 22 or so minutes left, there's nothing... I should be able to get Profane Capital and then... Next time I hop on, and I will be putting out the coming week's schedule tonight after the stream finishes up. So you can check that on the Twitter or the Discord, or... Well, there's also going to be a link on... It's also going to be on the Twitch itself in the schedule format, but... Frankly, that's a little clunkier. But, if you'd like to see me continue struggling through Dark Souls 3... And, frankly, I'm, I'm going to do it whether you want to or not... You'll be able to see the times and places where I'm available there. But yeah, it's been fun. And oh, that was you right there. Okay, I actually didn't notice that initially. Cool, cool, Diane. You're. Oh, come on. At least we killed. At least we killed. Appreciate it. Okay. So we go in a place that blocks the crossbow and we take this guy down. Though, frankly, a big reason I've been having so much trouble is because. This is actually the least durable I've been in a Souls game. Bloodborne was kind of bad too, but it's a dodgier game as well. And especially given that there are guns, it 
can be easier to try ranged if you actually want to do it, even though there isn't actually any magic proper in the game. But the big thing is, is that usually people want to take their vigor as in their HP stat to at least 40 by end game. And I am going to get to 20, maybe 23 if I'm lucky. So that is the big thing, is that the DLC isn't all that long. DS3 is actually, at least in terms of, you know, if you know what you're doing, how quickly you can beat the game, it is the shortest mainline Souls game by far. The longest is actually, I believe, well, Elden, if you don't count Elden Ring, if you don't count Elden Ring, it's definitely DS2, which I am an inveterate DS2 defender for a number of reasons, including the fact the big thing about DS2, and this is going to get into kind of abstruse mechanics, so you might want to, I don't know, shut your brain off, I guess, or maybe actually pay more attention, but the big thing is that usually, including in this one, and that's the reason I'm using paired weapons is because this game uses standard Dark Souls weapon magic, magic to use used to buff a weapon behavior, which is... It's a flat amount of damage added to any given hit, which means... Using faster weapons is the best way to take advantage of magic buffs on a weapon. But other Souls games, in particular... Dark Souls 2... Oh, we survived that, that's good. That's... No, wrong... What?! Wrong SS flask, and then we fell into a bottomless pit. That could not have gone sillier. But... As I was saying, normally it's just flat amount of damage added in a given attack, which means by far the best way to make use of them almost every time is going to be putting them on a fast weapon to just apply that flat bit of damage as fast as possible to max out your DPS. But Dark Souls 2 is different in which the amount of damage, is, that amount of damage of the other games is connected to your casting stats, the strength of the magic tool you're using to apply the buff, a staff or a talisman or something like that. But in Dark Souls 2, it's completely unconnected to those stats, at least through the Talisman or Catalyst. It's a flat amount of damage added to the weapon, and then a percentile buff added to any elemental damage that weapon already does. And what's very relevant is that normally in most Souls games, if weapons got any kind of special auxiliary effect, or any kind of innate elemental damage, you can't do any kind of elemental magic or resin buff on it. But Dark Souls 2, most weapons with pretty much any weapon can be inf can be buffed with resins or spells. And in particular, the big thing is if you if you infuse a weapon with more elemental damage. And the big thing is that you can also infuse pretty much any weapon because weapons with auxiliary effects usually aren't just unbuffable but also un uninfusable. But essentially, so you take, for example, imagine you have a big greatsword that deals a bit of fire damage in, say, Dark Souls 3. In Dark Souls 3, you probably wouldn't be able to infuse it with any kind of elemental damage, and you certainly wouldn't be able to buff it. In almost all cases. And also, since it was a greatsword, even if you could buff it, it wouldn't make use of the buff all that well. Because that flat damage is going to get diluted to basically nothing. There are some people who do it just... Because if you're already dealing a lot of damage, it can actually... A little bit extra can make the difference between killing something in one hit or two hits or three hits or something like that. But it's not as on-the-face useful. But, interestingly enough, Dark Souls 3 uniquely has a weapon buff that doesn't really add damage at all, but adds HP regeneration. And that one is actually often good on heavier weapons because you're not using it for the damage at all. Blessed weapon, blessed weapon, which I might... It'll be a while until I can get it. I'll have to get into near endgame, but I might try using some of it. We'll see. Using out some weapons. But as I was saying, in Dark Souls 2, however, and what's interesting is that infused weapons in Dark Souls 2, you can buff them with magic, but you can't use resins. Which, if you want to use weapon buffs, also specifically privileges using a spell sword build instead of just a melee build that buys a bunch of resins to apply buffs and elemental damage. So the best way to make use of elemental damage on a weapon in Dark Souls 2 is, well, going back to the Dark Souls 3 Fire Greatsword situation, the equivalent in Dark Souls 2 would be, there is a big greatsword that deals fire damage. What you do is, oh goodness, I, this is going to be bad. 
I need to rip my tears. I messed up that sleep. Okay, but the way to best way to use it in Dark Souls 2 would be, and this is actually precisely what I did. You take that fire greatsword and you put a fire infusion on it, which you can do in Dark Souls 2, which juices the fire damage to even more ridiculous levels, and then you use a pyromancy, you use flame weapon, which is still compatible to take the fire damage to even more ridiculous levels. And because of that, among other things, Dark Souls 2 is probably the best I was able to do. Well, Bloodborne got close, because Bloodborne, most Souls games have 8 or 9 stats. Bloodborne has 6, which means, meant that I got a lot closer to being effectively at a normal level of strength. Wait, what happened? Okay, what I would imagine just happened was... It hit me with both its actual arm and a lingering shockwave AoE afterwards. So that's what happens. Which means that I can't rely on tears to bear me out for that attack. Which sucks. But you know, I'm trying to stay positive. Every death is a new lesson learned. It's how, that's how I am choosing to see it. But as a result, another thing is, and this isn't something they say, I like how Dark Souls stats work, and there's a lot of the mysteries intended and successfully works to make it so that a lot of the game is a mystery for the player community to unravel together, which is part of why, even for kind of difficult, kind of sweaty game, the Dark Souls community, the Souls community is not as toxic as you might expect it to be. It's definitely not as toxic as something like Call of Duty or Call of Duty or Valorant or something like that, especially since it's not really a competitive game. That being an being a player invader is always very explicitly. You're always very explicitly meant to be an obstacle for the player to overcome instead of just. You're supposed to win, make their life hell, prevent them from progressing. It's just another kind of obstacle that the other player is eventually meant to overcome through various means. And. Which is a fundamentally different mindset, and if you actually talk to the director of Souls, Miyazaki Hidetaka, this awesome, this, this Japanese nerd, amazing, he has, he has nerd riz. You know, it, it might sound paradoxical, but I feel like Hidetaka Miyazaki, if there's any definition of nerd riz, it's gotta be Miyazaki. But, as I was saying, he he doesn't like to think of his games as quote-unquote difficult games. He likes to think of them more as games that require involvement and, you know, lateral thinking. You know, attention to get past obstacles. It's not supposed to be sort of a game that filters out the strong from the weak. It's supposed to be a game that gets you to engage. But, in particular, when he gets asked in interviews about multiplayer... The focus he always gives is on the cooperation, and if I recall correctly, this interview was only translated in English relatively recently, so it's possibly part of why a lot of people don't know about it, and it's also, you know, I'm gonna be an old dead horse. Namco Bandai, who From Software was finally managed to get out from under the thumb of, but now, they, now they're owned by Katakawa, and whether that's better or worse is up to you. Exercise left for the viewer. But... <sighs> Big thing is, is that the original Dark Souls was ma was marketed as a sweaty, real men hard game, and part of that was the only builds they showed in the ads were these, you know, sword and shield melee builds that, you know, didn't use magic, didn't use range, were very, you know, stereotypically sweaty. I would say, for lack of a better term, which just doesn't reflect doesn't reflect how the games often work out in practice for a number of reasons. Especially not how I like to play. And what's very, very interesting is that as time went on, FromSoft got more control, I would say, over how their own games were marketed. Especially with, you know, because they proved themselves a bit more as reliable AAA game developers who also, unlike a lot of other AAA ga game developers, make games that are objectively, not objectively, but generally considered to be good by most people who play them. Yo. 
There are a lot of people who will say that the difficulty of FromSoft games is a barrier to them, and that's legitimate. If there are arguments to be made about the necess necessity of an easy mode, but personally, I tend to try to defer to... I'm the kind of person who tends to defer to the judgment of the artist, for lack of a better term, that it's cool when games have a lot of accessibility options, but I think, and I saw someone talk about this, that it's also kind of, there's also, it's also often fraught to say that difficulty modes are in and, them, in and of themselves accessibility options in the same kind of way, because... I mean, there's a big difference between not between being blocked by a game because you have one arm and the control layout doesn't work with you. And as much as I dislike Microsoft, Microsoft has been very, very good, very, very cool and innovative about making various kinds of adaptive controllers which are made to work well with people for to people with disabilities. But and saying, oh, the game blocks me off because I don't have mechanical skill or I'm not patient or something like that. And I think it's. There's room for both arguments, and I think saying, oh, it's offensive to say that people who are disabled will be bad at games because they're disabled, I think that also kind of misses the points, but I do think there's a big thing between difficulty options and accessibility options. And accessibility options are good and should be done as much as possible, but I think to the extent that difficulty is just difficulty, the extent that you can... Oh, Profane Flame. Can be reduced to that. I think it should always be left as a choice of the devs. You know, not every game can be for everybody. And, you know, like I was talking about with, you know, for example, Gacha Games and Demographics. You know, it's good that games for various kind of, kinds of audiences exist. It's good that games like Souls that demonstrate that require a lot of execute, that oftentimes require some execution barrier or at least, you know, paying attention trial and error, you know, committing to your actions exist. It's good that both kinds of games exist. You know, I don't, I think that anyone who insists that all games should be like Dark Souls or all games should be like, I don't know, Animal Crossing New Horizons, and I say this as someone who played New Horizons a bit and liked it a lot, even if I didn't play it all that much. I liked what I played, I liked what I played. It's good that there are very different kinds of games for very different kinds of people with very different kinds of tastes. And it takes a good amount of humility to say, not every game will be for me. And frankly, and I don't mean this in a purely cynical way, it's more in a sense of, it takes a real amount of maturity that even people who can be successful in life don't often develop. The ability to just say, you know, not everything has to be my way. But... Like I said, back on the topic of difficulty... Kai Senat, who's a real big streamer who normally doesn't even really do a lot of games, recently got done beating Elden Ring after a 100 plus hour just pure marathon run. And... He used a weapon called Blasphemous Blade, which is a... Fire element greatsword with a decent amount of scaling off of various stats. And it's generally just a very good option if you can make it work. But a lot of people were saying, oh, it's cheesy. He didn't really beat the game because he used this really strong weapon. But if FromSoft didn't want a very strong weapon, weapons that were a little bit more, more powerful than others, options that were stronger than others to be in the game, they would patch them out. They've nerfed things that they've seen as being too power powerful before, even in PvE. You know, oftentimes they'll nerf things stronger in PvP, so that things are more balanced in PvE. PvP while still leaving the single-player power fantasy aspect relatively intact, but it's not as if... Okay, the big thing is, I should take... If I recall correctly, Heavy Soul Arrow is actually the best for Estus Economy. It's the most damage per FP spent, but also, also... This might be a good opportunity to switch around Estus. I think I might just get... Got another Estus Shard, which does mean that, yeah, it will max out at 15. Let's reinforce the flask, and then... A lot to get... Oh, it already gave us... No, no, 9 and 4. 9 and 4, that's good. Thank you, thank you. 
So in that case, we'll go kill the giant. I don't imagine he'll respawn. Don't imagine he, she, hit them thing. I do not imagine that a giant without sufficiently distinguishing sexu sexual characteristics to make a verdict on one way or the other is going to respawn after we kill it. And when we kill it, we have to... Oh, we, we gotta go for the head. Because that will... The big thing is, is that a big group of hogs is going to be really in the way to get around. I think I'll... I will go over this way, but that will require some finagling with the elevator. But, like I was saying, FromSoft deliberately leaves options that might be a little overpowered, a little stronger, a little weaker in the games for a reason. And it's because that is effectively the FromSoft game difficulty toggle. It's not a perfect approach, it's not a one-size-fits-all approach, but it's one way to do things, and it does seem to be the way they've chosen to do things. You know, it is an artistic choice that they made, de made as devs that any given player is free to have an opinion on one way or the other. Personally, I like it. Other people are free to not like it. But I think the important thing is saying, a game can be not for me, a game can be not for everyone without being some grave injustice. It's impossible for everyone to like everything. It might be possible for everyone to be neutral about everything, like 2000's Applebee's discourse. But for people, there isn't... Oh, oh, this actually led back here. Oh, that's cool, which means we could use this as a way to get to the giant's head quicker. So that was how that went. There are other, some other side drop-downs, which I also need to check out. I wonder if they might be the inside of those rat tunnels. I could not tell for certain whether those rats spawn infinitely, or whether there were just a whole lot of them. But, yeah. Because that's the big thing, is that every now and then it's kind of stopped because, quite frankly, they gave up trying. There were people in stream basically saying, oh, you should... You should try out Star Rail. I play Star Rail more than Genshin these days. And for me, well, a lot of the reason I've stuck with Genshin isn't just that I like the gameplay better, it's also just... I've been at it a while and discarding all that progress and starting in, especially since I do legitimately enjoy the game. But if I, if I actually dislike the game, I would quit. But I like the game. And also, I do have a lot of built-up stuff in it. But, <clears throat> as I was saying, you know, I never insulted the game because it... There was nothing wrong with the game. I was just busy. I didn't have time for it in the schedule. And my personal taste, my personal taste, made it me meant that I liked Genshin a bit better. But that was just that was just life. No one did anything wrong. It's just not every game is for everybody. Big thing is I should. If I wake this guy up, and hopefully, oh goodness, gotta find a way to keep aiming for his head. Cause that is by far the best. Way to hit. Will it? Come on, come on. I, what? Will this... This should be good. And... Oh, interesting. Hajime Masenshi, how are you doing? Neo? Neo? What do you... Oh, oh, no, is it not... Well, all I'm gonna say is... The VOD will be up. The VOD will always be up. I'm a little behind on updates, uploads, and I don't like to do them multiple in a single day, but, okay. Big thing, I, I know you said something about trouble with school before, and I didn't have a chance to tell you, but now I think, what, what I'm going to say is, here, here's my unsolicited life advice. Nothing is ever over until you personally say it's over. Your dreams don't die until you give up on them. Don't do things because you think you have to do them. Or because they think you think it's the only thing you can do. Do the thing you think is right and what you want to do. Do what you believe in. Don't give up defeat. No matter what other people say. No matter what it looks like. The only way to live a life that you can be proud of is to live true to your principles and not give up on the things you care about. That's all. I, I have faith in you. I have faith in you. I mean, I, I was, I was a little afraid. Thank you, thank you. Happy to help. I was afraid. Power, power. I'm giving you power. My energy is going over to you. But as I was saying, as I was saying,
Like I said, the only way to live a life that you can really be proud of is to live a, live a life that you think is just. Oh, but you were saying stuff about having trouble, and I was a little afraid of it. But then I remembered, you know, when I was a, a high school senior, I was also very prone to hyperbole. Well, either way, good luck with it. I hope everything works out for you. I, I, I'm i sure it will. You have the strength and resilience. You have to greatly misquote Winnie the Pooh. You have more intelligence, resilience, courage, and strength than you think. There's no such thing as an insurmountable obstacle. Well, I mean, there are, but, you know, I don't think graduating high school is one of them. I hope not. Okay, so let's... Ooh, oh, we're almost, almost, almost dead. Let's... Go over and... Ooh, oh, yeah, 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 rats, 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 okay. Mm -hmm. You know... You know, you know maybe, maybe this does make me the Jerma. If I, any, any, any time I see rats, you know, it's just... It's the that's what I should do a cover of. That's what I do the... That's what I should do a cover of. I need to cover the Jerma rat song. That's right. On a somewhat related note, I was actually watching... Like I said before, I was visiting a friend. Very specifically, I was in a choir back in college. And my little sister actually graduated high school today, so... She is moving on to a new phase in her life, but... Among other things... My underclassmen from college were also doing a bit of graduation themselves. So I went to visit them, and I... Specifically, I went up to see the final concert of this year's edition, for lack of a better term. This year's roster, I guess. Lineup. Coterie. Of the choir I was in. And they were really good, but that was the second day I was there. The first day I was there, I was actually there to see the final performance of a student band that a few of those guys in the choir had formed. And they were really, really good, too. They did a cover of The Chain by Fleetwood Mac, which was... Normally, they do a lot of 2000s garage rock stuff, like, well, garage and all, because they do a lot of Arctic Monkeys, but I don't think people would call the Arctic Monkeys garage, but they usually do a lot of strokes, and their individual style is, I would say it's kind of in between strokes and Arctic Monkeys, but, okay, the big thing is I should probably, there are a few drop downs over here that I want to check out, and I should probably use Silver Cap for them if I want to not die, but as I was saying, I was crashing at the apartment of one of my friends who stuck around, graduated in the same class as me, but stuck around to do law school, actually. So that drops down there, and okay, so this would drop down here. Okay, so all of it just drops down here, I think. But would one of them drop down over... Okay, one of them would drop down over there, that's right. So if I had done that, I actually could have skipped over the giant entirely. Well, you know, one day, far, far in the future, I will come back and try to speed run Dark Souls 3 with this file on maximum New Game Plus with every stat maxed out. And knowing the shortcuts will probably help, because I don't imagine I'll really need Titanite anymore at that point. But this will be... Wait a little bit more. So that's what that little outcropping was meant for. Hello, friend. Well, not friend, just rat I want to kill. Oh, thanks! That was fun. Oh, but right. Good thing I had Silver Cat on. So I'm gonna run up, I'm gonna go back down and go through that little sewer passage area. Yeah. And I miss the ladder again because I confuse with the other outlet. I will say, I've got a lot more energy that right now than I was initially expecting. Because I left the house party that happened after the concert. And it was crazy. Because their neighbor was on meth or crack or something he had taken some actual dangerous substance and it was out in we were in the backyard which was fenced off but he was in the front yard just basically trying to raise hell and apparently he had actually robbed the clubs off campus house that a lot of the guys mostly the, the way the club does things is usually is the guys who are going to be in positions of club authority that year is in usually the president Ever since I started, it, it actually started the first year I was there as a freshman, but they started having the presidents, they started having two presidents instead of one so they could share responsibilities, 
And after that, it kind of became tradition. Some people have kind of started disliking it a bit. Because it does lead to a bit of dilution. In a certain sense, even if it does help them handle things. In particular, my senior year, one of the two presidents was not really involved. Because he was also a dorm RA. So it's kind of, he was a president largely in name only. We also did... We actually did these mini concerts to perform for donors to get them to, you know, actually continue donating and funding our educations. But he would oftentimes sort of get us all involved, get us for that. So he was, he graduated the same year as I did, but last year. But eventually the tradition of, well, to be fair, it's, you know, only a five year or so tradition at this point of having, as we called them, co-presidents eventually reached out to the vice-presidents. Because the first year they had co-presidents, there was still only one vice-president. But shortly after that, they started having two veeps. And the vice-presidents don't really do club government. They're actually, they run, the, they run house parties and social functions because they're... And it's all... I imagine the pawn will be a little obvious to you once you hear it. They're the presidents of vice. They're the vice-presidents because they preside over vice. But they've always been cool guys. Always been cool guys. Well, most of the time. It. My. And I don't mean to say this to, bra say this to brag. But my senior year. A lot of the underclassmen really, really liked me. A lot more than the other seniors. And to be fair, I was in sort of a position of unfair advantage. Because most of the other seniors had some position of actual authority. But I, due to doing a lot of academic stuff. And also, for, quite frankly, being lazy did not. Which meant that I never had to be the bad guy. I could always kind of take their side or at least be even-handed and... And to be frank, beyond even that, I think honestly... And I don't say this often, I think I give myself a little too... Frankly, too little credit. Okay, right here is variable left. So is one of these a... Mm, so one of them's a... Okay, cool. One of them's a mimic. So that means, how do I want to do this? Oh, and you're on all fours now, interesting. But, I also... It wasn't even really hazing. And I think... The big thing about it, and I think a lot of it is, I think my personal bias, you know, having done, you know, a club that was, you know, it was all guys. It was a men's choir. I mean, not, it's not as if we had any problem with women. It's just, it's a different kind of music. SATB is in soprano, alto, tenor, baritone is in mixed choir arrangements. Musically are just fundamentally different. So there were mixed, there were mixed choirs and there were single gender choirs of other type. And due to scheduling reasons and other things, I ended up joining the men's choir. The big thing is, is that I think it's very important to talk about what, you know, when, when people say hazing, it can mean a lot of things, because you hear about, and one, one thing I find interesting is that the club I was in was arguably, arguably one of the frattier activities on campus, but never in a bad way. It was always in a sense of, we got up to shenanigans and we had a lot of camaraderie, because, and a lot of it. The year before I came in, the year before I was a freshman, the president this, that year specifically said that the, Gle that the club had formerly been really, really fratty in a bad way. That there was a lot of really uncomfortable hazing that made a lot of people feel really nasty about themselves. And when I started, they did, I mean, in the strictest sense, you could call it hazing, but it was always strictly optional. And the entire point is we planned all these silly, goofy activities for you to do as a rookie group so that you can get a stronger bond to each other and also, you know, have fun with the seniors. You know, a lot of them, you know, they required getting out of our comfort zones. And one of them was literally, they were like, oh yeah, this is the senior house, we bought Ikea furniture. We're gonna have you put our Ikea furniture together. But it was, it was always good nature. There was never any kind of intimidation. It was just, we're good natured, silly guys. We're gonna, we're gonna goof off. You're gonna goof off with us and we're all gonna have a righteous old time. And, and part of that was also just, the initial interview was also a silly affair, where, you know, some of them were musical questions, but a lot of it was just various kinds of comedy bits that they do and have us join in on. 
I didn't get to participate in it when I was a senior in part because I, again, didn't have any real position authority. But it... That first president, the last singular president I've experienced in the choir, was the guy who specific, was specifically in charge of that change in direction, as far as I could tell. And I think, even lacking the direct perspective of being able to say, okay, I did, you know, I experienced such and such before, and the new stuff, and the new stuff is conclusively better. Based on what I've heard, I'm grateful for him. Because I had a great four years, and to the extent that I didn't, it was because I didn't buy in enough and was not willing to just let go and throw myself, throw caution to the wind. But my senior year, the year where a lot of the underclass, where I became sort of a folk hero and weird sort of combination older brother and goofy friend, goofy little brother sometimes even to the underclassmen, that was some of the most fun I've had in my life. And I'm glad that by the time I came along, by the time I was willing to really participate, Things had gotten healthy and non-toxic, but still close-knit and a lot of fun. It was... It, it was time-wise, really, my one activity, the one activity I could do. Some people try to do stuff like marching band with it, too, because they're crazy. But it was the one thing I really did, to the point where I didn't even really do a lot of dorm stuff. Because dorm stuff there was also very big. But I'm glad I was able to participate there, because the guys were great. Every time I got to see them again, it's a lot of fun. It was... They were all very, very happy to see me when I was back last night. It was worth only having two hours sleep this morning, because I left at 4, came back home at 6. Had to do more singing in the morning with my dad, and then go to my sister's graduation. The cell, but alone, was a lone giant. Cells for men were built at his feet. So where's that going to be? But that's enough. I can buy graphical information. Okay, dragon torso stone is right there. Interestingly enough. Gesture, but dragon required a head. Oh, so this is going to be the way to Arch Dragon Peak, I presume. So I'm going to have to get a gesture from somewhere then. Well, whenever that happens, I'll do that then. So we're just going to go back up. Keep on chilling. Okay, so that up there is clearly something we need to drop down again. But actually, it might be better to do that on the way back down. I'm not entirely sure. So at least we wouldn't have an option maybe dropping into a pitfall that would just kill us. So the name of Soldier and off shortcut. That's one of those shortcuts through, and this was this was the lower level of the first area. So that'll be nice for getting back more quickly. The Earth Dungeon is well to be fair, I've died a lot of times and for very stupid reasons, but Oh, okay, right, right. Since I'm not actually I don't have to fight that giant again. I don't have to fight any giants again. I should. I should go back up and well, I guess I could try using a homeward bone or something. But, run back to the bonfire, put flame mark back on. Especially since my Estus is getting more than a little low. Oh, but wait, is this... Have I been here? Oh, this is... This is the other... Yeah, this is the other side. I got confused. Hello there, hello. Darkness, my old friend. So in that case, capital's over there, but that's over that way. The way down is that way, but once we go actually go down that way, we'll have to cross the lower level, and that will actually put us close to capital. So, get my stuff, kill this other jailer, and get my flame mark back, open up a few more doors probably, go down that elevator, and then that will be... Once I see the profane capital title pop up, I think that will be my cue to call it a night. I was a little late showing up, and I don't want to... Three hours is a bit short, but four hours wouldn't mean going to midnight. Keeping people who have already been... I went to the bonfire. I did not remember to put Carthus Flame Mark back up. People who have been busy and stressed out and the focus of a lot of attention today. I don't want to keep sisters up too long. But we are nearly done. Still be chilling, right? I'm gonna put on tears of denial before going back into the fold. Now imagine if I hadn't lost that big blood stain, I would have been able to level up one more time. The big thing is if I if I can get intelligence, well, I almost definitely will not get intelligence to 20. When I fight dancer, I won't have any. I probably won't be able to use dark blade at all during this run, which means that my best source of dark damage is probably gonna be. It's gonna be some kind of deep soul spell. The issue is, is 
I've got Deep Soul. I could pick up Great Deep Soul anytime I want because I've got enough human drags to exchange with McDonald's. But I need 20 intelligence to do that, and there isn't a spicing system to use spells at lower requirements like there was in Dark Souls 2, which was also a really cool thing that only Dark Souls 2 did. Common theme here. So in that case, go down through here, around that half-breed dragon, and this will lead back down to that shortcut. Kill this guy with a quick plunging attack. I think it... There we go! We were able to change direction in time to actually get the hit off, which is good. And then we can... Oh, there, hello. One, two, three, and... You're dead. Can we... Ah, oh, please. Two, three... That is a lot of basically unavoidable damage dealt to my person. This may surprise you, but that is not exactly pleasant for me. Okay. I think, interestingly enough, this was a real surprise to me. The Karthus Grave Warden Skeletons are actually weaker to magic than fire. So I'm wondering if these guys are weaker to fire than magic. I think they're probably weaker to fire. Or if they have or they might just be equally weak to any kind of elemental elemental damage, at least. I know that generally, but that isn't a hollow proper. It's, you know, a cage containing a bunch of hollows, but... Down over here, what are we going to get? Oh, Lightning Blade! I can't use that. That takes... 30! Yep, can't use that. Dragon Slayer Knight in the Age of Gods. Rare thing, Fragments and Whispers of Remote Regions. What's very, very interesting, and heaven help me, I will have to mention fate, but what's very interesting is that, and it's especially interesting considering that in Elden Ring, lightning is actually, basically, it's the element used, used by dragons, that lightning in Souls games is the specific weakness of dragon enemies. And two, three, four, five, six. That was good. We did that quite well. Big thing is, I need to run away, let my health come back, and see how far those jailers will chase me. So one is chasing me, which, if you turn around, I'll just... The lantern's gone, that's good. Okay, I'll cut you up. I don't have to fight two at once when I get that other group, which is good. But as I was saying... I was saying. In Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 2, the equivalent of that Lightning Blade miracle is actually called Sunlight Blade. And in Dark Souls 1, at least, I don't entirely remember in Dark Souls 2 the description, but interestingly enough, it was specifically stated that lightning is the manifestation of the power of sunlight, which actually makes a somewhat, some amount of sense in the sense that the sun is a big ball of plasma, and the most common source of plasma naturally on Earth is lightning strikes. So there's a bit of connection there. It's a bit hackneyed and a bit silly, but something interesting which, and I looked it up to see if anyone had picked up on it already, but nobody had, which is that in Dark Souls 3, there's a miracle, there's a spell called Repair, which actually also appeared in Dark Souls 1. But in Dark Souls 3, the description is very, very different. And specifically, what it says is that... Oh, all that nice. Is that... A secret of magic is that light itself is time. And repair works by turning back time to repair the durability of a weapon by using... By using light to control time. And that... Okay, what is coming over to get me here? But what's interesting is that... You know, sunlight is sunlight is light. Lightning is sunlight. Therefore, arguably, sunlight is time. And what that means, at least to me, is that the reason that... Okay. Oh, goodness. And I, oh, wow. I, okay. I, all right. They deal a lot more damage than I expected. Okay. So let's heal up real quick. And I should try kiting these guys around, going for some kind of hit and run. Oh, yo, oh you've got a breath attack. But, as I was saying, the dragons in Dark Souls, at least the original dragons, are referred to as everlasting dragons and sometimes as stone dragons. And that combination is not meaningless because the, their immortality is tied to their scales of stone. One of 
the main enemies that you have to fight in Dark Souls 1 is a scaleless dragon, see, the scaleless who, one, invented magic in Dark Souls, but two, since he didn't have scales, he wasn't immortal. It was explicitly the scales that granted immortality. And very specifically in the intro in cinematic, which is recited by a British Chinese actress named Pixen Lim, who is actually very, very, has had a very, very illustrious career long before Dark Souls ever happened. But among, oh, Profane Coal, well, I might use Hollow Infusion on something. I think it'd be good on Drain Twin Spears. It'll be a while until I can actually use the Spears. But she was also in Johnny English Reborn as a assassin masquerading as a queen, or totally silent role. But that was with Rowan Atkinson. So basically, it's a spy movie, but the protagonist is Mr. Bean. It was critically panned, but I enjoyed it, and so did my family. So, my the, the jury will be, the jury will rest. But as I was saying, it's explicitly stated in the Dark Souls One intro cinematic that the lightning bolts, the power of the sun, were specifically able to tear off the stone scales of the dragons, which. Other people have tried to think about why that might be possible. And they keep trying to think about physical justifications like plasma being able to melt certain kinds of stone or something. You know, just being really, really hot. But if you go at it in the angle of light is time and sunlight is light, therefore sunlight is time, which to be fair, we didn't have the... We didn't have all the pieces for it until Dark Souls 3. Because the description of repair in Dark Souls 1 was different. And did not speak even slightly about the idea of light equals time. But, I guess, you know, people are oftentimes, or at least should be in the business of making connections like these, but... Oh, but wait, did I... Did I go a different way, or is this a different, different one? I'm confused. But as I was saying, the most obvious example is that it's... The Fate series likes to do a lot of things with quote-unquote concepts. You know, the, and it's part of why a lot of people who try to power scale Fate end up looking like idiots. Because Fate is not a series that can really be power scaled. Because victories are almost always done based on what would make the most sense narratively. What would best work with the themes of the setting of the work. And so a lot of times, matchups will be determined, you know, not by who has the best stats, which is really funny because they do have a stat system. But a lot of it is almost explicitly to set up situations where individual compatibilities or lack of, lacks of compatibilities between various characters' abilities will mean even though such and so, such and such character might you might think they they would be weak, their ability specifically counters such and someone else's ability, or maybe it's not even in a specific sense and more, you know, this character is a god and this character soared because they were a hero in life with a legend of slaying gods just. Their attacks, even if they're literally the same atta exact attacks, just do more damage to gods for that reason. But <clears throat> that sort of conceptual advantage, as the game likes to call it and fans like to call it, is basically the closest equivalent of what was happening, in my opinion, in my reading, with Gwyn's Lightning and the Dragons and Dark Souls. That is, Lightning was basically the concentrated power of time itself. It was naturally effective on beings whose entire, who basically had armor of timelessness. Visions of fear. Just got, oh, nice. Thanks. Honestly, those are really nice messages. Because I'm not bad with jump scares, but I don't enjoy them. So it's nice that that actually had a bit of warning. Yeah, actual Dark Souls accessibility option. Warning for the three jump scares in the whole game. Okay. So is that a dragon crossbreed, or is that a... No, that's a jailer. It's not a grand crossbreed or a basilisk. But there are dragon crossbreeds and basilisk breeding that breath, too. So this will let us get up. Otherwise, that was just a drop down. So what's in here? Oh, and this is locked, too. So is there going to be an illusory wall, or... Okay, three locked doors. A few locked doors, then. Something that was locked, something that was... Hmm. That key, I... I'm gonna have to go in again eventually, I'm sure that. And what is. Oh! We these guys are lycanthropes and. I, oh, wow. I, interesting. I thought you would get stuck on the wall. I thought you would get more stuck on the wall. I. Okay, okay, I. Alright. We need to keep on rolling and use this too. 
get out of the way of you and then Ash and Estes. Big thing is we need to get tears up before you dodge, dodge. Uh, that was very, very close. What a thrill. Okay, but you are actually very, very staggerable and very weak to fire. So as long as we can hit you once and have enough stamina for the full combo, you die without much trouble. All right, and pointless. So is that all, or is, is there an oyster wall here? No, it was locked, which means it's going to be some key I need later. But is is this Carla? Carla might be, and I think it was. Switch action. No, no. If we can talk, it's not here. But I do know that there's some glitch that can lead to Carla dying when you're trying to save her. You're talking to her and then get killed by a jailer, if I recall correctly. So I'm going to try to not do that. Okay, so there are a couple more locked doors. And then, okay, that down there, that's got to be the struggle for pain capital. So you're getting close. I think we should hit a bonfire rel relatively soon. Oh, but also, Sigurd is supposed to be somewhere in Irritable Dungeon. So that means I'll need to go back and look for some locked doors. Large soul of a weary warrior. But either way, if we reach Profane, that will... A meaningful amount will have been accomplished. That'll be nice. So we're in Profane now, and... Oh, what is... What are you? Oh my goodness, you are... Okay. Dodge, dodge, and... Uh, we're kind of stuck on that, but I... Hmm, hmm, I don't quite like that. Do I want to do with this? They actually... Okay, now I know where the gargoyles from Alderman come from. The very similar and pretty similar fighting style, too. So in that case, let's... That will help a little bit. Gonna have to take off the crown. I think... That said, I don't have any Estus, and that is... Unwise, but... This guy can't come up here at all. Which means that if I take advantage of that... I could maybe hit him with relative impunity. Doesn't have any kind of projectile. Okay, thanks, thanks, thanks. Nice, and hit one, two, and dodge. Oh, okay, and so that's a two-hit combo, it seems. What are you gonna do? Stab, and okay, interesting. Hit one, two, and dodge, dodge, and oh, interesting, thank you. So just, hmm. Big swing, and more hits, and... Okay, you're bigger than I expected, which means... I thought you were a little smaller, so I expected... I thought you were close. I thought you were incredibly small and incredibly close, instead of incredibly large and incredibly far away. But either way, after we kill this gargoyle, which... Via using the, bri using the staircase to cheese it, shouldn't be too horrible. I will... One, two, three... Oh, what? Oh, I didn't know you could use your wing as a shield. That's actually really cool. I don't think the older Magogos do that. Though, to be fair, when I sped run through the game with my sorcery build, I didn't actually fight any of them. So, go ahead. Attack. And can we hit it? Oh, goodness. I, ooh, but you don't do all the much damage. Though. That's the thing. So that should be swing and... One, two, there we go, that one's dead. And just before, I don't think we equipped Shield of One soon enough. But we should be able to get access to a quick bonfire here. I don't think I'll rest it in because that would get all the enemies in the dungeon respawn and that would mean having to kill a lot of them again. But I imagine there should be a bonfire around here and, oh, it's right over there. How am I going to get across? I hope that there aren't any enemies just randomly showing up to ruin my day once I step down here. But, uh, I will interact with that bonfire just so it's lit, and if I die, I go back there instead. If I can act- okay, right, it's this ladder, okay. It'll be the first profane capital bonfire, which I imagine would be part of your little dungeon in the map tab, unless they want to be really silly and make it so that Irithal Dungeon has a tab all to itself with only one... Oh, Undead Bone Shard. Eh, interesting. Well, either way, that's our first bonfire here in Profane Capital. I'm gonna have to get away a little bit to make sure that I don't 
accidentally trigger respawn all the enemies, but we got a decent enough amount done. We killed another Lord of Cinder. Only one boss, but you know, that's life. We had, there was a lot of good conversation today. And good viewership, too. Thank you to everyone who watched, everyone who couldn't make it. And Sanaragen, Katsu, I will talk to you about business arrangements sometime. See you all.